a go button and we'll pick it up uh, we got right to this chamber here yeah, uh, at these. i will reshare the map where we were in case we don't have it up uh this large chamber is ringed by a railing walkway on the second floor on the far side of the room a grand staircase rises up to the second floor of the manor a uh, gilded chandelier hangs from the ceiling covered in cobwebs and dust on either side of the chandelier two carved wooden pillars extend to the ceiling of the second floor above so um on the very end of uh last session you met uh, a woman who was standing guard in this chamber at the top of the staircase. She had a crossbow trained on the uh, on the door. And her name was Delta Gwyn. And you had a short discourse with her about um, a person by the name of Cyrathus, who was apparently the leader. And uh, she wanted to know specifically if you guys were with either A, the Friendly Fellows, or B, sent by Veltargo to finish them off. Did she announce her name or no? Yeah, she did. She told you her name was Delta. Okay, Veltargo? Veltargo. And you guys can... Search that, uh, search your memory banks. I don't know if you've gone back and read through any of the stuff from previous sessions looking for that name. Um, I it's thought a we had discussed with her about not being from or sent by that guy. Okay. We, 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 I, I think we already told her we were here on our own. Okay. And I, not with him. All right. I mean, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Probably. Yeah, we kind of, we kind of did. Yeah, I believe we answered a question with knife. Okay, so what are you doing here then? I think we also said something about we are interested in working with her, but we can start at that part of it over again. Yeah, so yeah, that's let's, what let's, that's, let's that's pick what Naka would say. We heard uh, we heard your the green dagger has come to some recent uh, misfortune and it also green dagger also has something that we would like to perhaps do business with and regain this item so perhaps we can talk uh there could be mutual um mutual uh what's the word i want out of character out of character uh um, mutual benefits Benef benefits back in character okay i are, are you willing to uh Step into the room and not not pull any funny business while I. Uh, uh, Naka will step in the room with her bow uh, down. Okay. Uh, here, here, I, here I am with my faithful companion. Sorry. Big rat. <laughs> uh, Teddy's Teddy kind of like sniffing around. Is the room to the north or to the south? It is to the. East. Yeah. Actually, it's north. actually it's. Uh, so, I'm trying to think on the. It, it's to the north. On the map, it's to the east. On the map, it's actually to the north. I think with the. Um, I don't know oh, if you, you guys can with see the it. Double door. Yeah. The double doors to head to the east. Yeah. If you if you can go right up to the um, the top of the map, I don't know if you can see the Green Dagger Hideout Carter Street. There's a rosette that says north. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but up, like visually, up, visually yeah. on this map, we, right, it's right is north. East. Yeah, right is right. north. Okay. So, so she says, "One moment, one moment," and she, um, she bangs on the wall about six or seven times, and then she kind of, um, she kind of concentrates for a moment, and you can hear, you can see her head nod. And uh, she looks like she's she's thinking about something really hard. And she says, Serathis says to stay right there. He'll be right. He'll be over in a moment. Very good. Uh, had we had any ill intentions, your sickly companions have would have perished under our uh, 
un under our uh, investigation. And by the way, pardon our intrusion, but uh, we wanted to have an audience with you. I understand we didn't answer the door. So, let's see here. Also... All right, in a couple moments, um, probably about a minute or so, it takes for, for this to happen. Um, a fairly tall, like oh, probably around six feet, rail, th rail thin man. Um, let's see if I have a picture here. Uh, he's got blonde hair and it's pulled back tight into a ponytail. And he's got uh, like the um, the aquiline features of of an elf. Uh, he looks like um, he may be of the same people as um, as Luna, in fact. And uh, he doesn't seem to have uh, any prominent weapons or anything like that. But he's got a strap across his um, his shoulder. Like a leather strap could very well hold a crossbow or something like that. And um, he comes walking along the the catwalk up top. Does he give an impression that he is sick? I mean, no. Clearly, we're not doing an examination of him. So. No. Um, Naka will walk into the area where he can see her. Okay. He says... Uh, my name is Syrathus. You're uh, just invited yourselves into our into our space. Um, I'm curious as to what brings you here. Greetings, uh, Naka would introduce herself and just briefly mention whatever that we're after here. So, as you can see, we uh, we can be of uh, mutual benefits to each other. The key. You've come for the key. I see. He holds up her finger and says, There's a truck outside. Please wait. <laughs> One moment, please. Special delivery. <laughs> beep, beep. If I remember right. We did knock first. Yeah, you did. Went, you did. Oh, yeah. I think Alex is uh, just coming in. How's the uh, sound in this headset? It sounds like there's a truck rolling through. <laughs> sounds like you're driving. Uh, sorry, I'll uh, mute then because my PC has a lot of fan noise. Oh, okay. You can listen in, if, but you can mute if you're not at the table. I think that's his laptop fan. Um, yeah. Well, the fan. Sorry, I have an old Razer um, laptop, and the, the fans just go crazy. That's okay. It just logged me out of this call. Yeah, no oh, worries. Man, How you doing, Alex? I'm frenetic. I may have to take one call, but after that, I'll be free for the. Yeah, cool. Just mute us out whenever you get a chance, and then, um, or, or mute yourself and jump in when you feel. I, am I mute now? No. Oh, okay. right, let's try it again. <laughs> There we go. That's awesome. Thank you. So he says you're you're here for the key, I see. Everybody's interested in this key. The key. Now that you've mentioned it, perhaps uh, you can tell us a little bit about why everyone wants it. I don't know. I was approached by a man several days ago. Uh, Priest of Arth. Um, you guys... 
if you have any um, knowledge religion or anything i can give you a little background on earth but basically he's um he was a human who became a wizard who became a god and um it's kind of like um the nobles worship him it's like one of the richest temples in town he's kind of the, like the god of knowledge and secrets um So, um, Sarathus continues. He says, uh, I was approached by a, um, a priest of Arth. Um, of course, we were having a little difficulty, which I'm sure that you saw um, several weeks ago. Um, several of our members fell ill to a sickness. And as more and more of my men succumbed, I grew desperate and uh, I was approached by a priest of Arth who said that he could uh, deliver a cure if we were to um, do a job for him, um, procure an item important to their faith. Uh, he described where the item was what it was uh, i didn't feel like risking um the, the few of my people that i had left so i uh i reached out to a person who had done business with us several times in the past that i was fairly trusting could take care of the job and uh and that's i think where we are caught up and she mentions about um uh, tusk, something tusk. Iron tusk, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, he's fairly trustworthy. Um, yes, he seems to be, and amendable to uh, to to doing business. But let me ask you something, Sarathus. Do you find it odd that uh, how how did this priest know about your situation? Did you go to the priest? No, it's um, it's fairly common knowledge now throughout the neighborhood, the, uh, hmm. the district. Um, I'm not sure how it all started. Uh, I've got my suspicions. Either the friendly fellows are behind it or what's left of the friendly fellows anyway. Uh, so, how do you know this priest is not behind it to start, all, to start it all off? Well, now the more that I think about it, you may in fact be correct. Although we had no connection with him, um, prior to several days ago, mm -hmm. so well, it's possible. Anything's my possible. Com my but companions and I can investigate and uh, discover the truth. If part of the deal with you could be that we can somehow have the key back. Well, you're welcome to the key if you can find Veltargo, for I gave it to him. Uh, he approached us uh, not 15 minutes after Iron Tusk delivered it. It was almost as if he was watching and knew. Mm. And um, in the dire straits that we were in, he delivered um, what I was absolutely convinced what he had promised, um, potions, magical potions to take care of the disease of my... Uh, as it seems, it doesn't seem to be the case, right? Well, it doesn't seem to have been effective. Um, it, uh, do you know anything about the sorcerer's arts? Or do any of you? Uh, some of my companions do. Well, there's, uh, there's various auras you can read and sift if you know how to, if you know how to do such things. And uh, for all intents and purposes, these uh, elixirs, um, they held up to scrutiny that I was convinced was correct. So mm -hmm. this uh, formula, this, this potion, was meant to cure your sick. Is that right? And it didn't do it? It did not. You, you the probably, promise was that it would cure them, that was not the delay problem. the poison or the disease. No, no, just take the, take the uh, effects away. Can we I examine think. a sample of this elixir? Perhaps we can look at it and see if, you know, properties about it maybe were 
you were misled by another group or maybe or simply a placebo. The um, everybody consumed theirs, so there isn't any left. Well, it could pretty much be mud water for all that matters. Yeah, it seems. Um, all right, very well. Uh, there, I, I, sup- I have. Um, I have suspicions about um, Veltago's veracity as a priest of Arth. Now that I think about it, um, his robes were rather unkempt. He always smelled of the marsh. Um, he had the um, he had the look of a, a trance user. Um, and Would it be fair to say for me to assume that you are under force to? exact retribution for what he did <laughs> there's just a few of us left oh, i see well as i said we may be of uh of service and uh, provide uh, some beneficial mutual uh services here agreements perhaps, perhaps. One... go on I, I was going to say um we don't have the key um but i do have some gold stashed away um, there's an apothecary not far from here. His name is Silas Ledbetter. He won't do business with us, but, um... He mentions the apothecary that they just visited. Is that the one? No, that's a Merkel. He's, uh, way down on Cash Street. Ah, right. And as far he's as had... you know, he's already got home for the night. Mm, right. He, he was closing up shop. Why don't they do business with you? Uh, we've had some, um, disputes in the past, and, uh... I see. I've, I've dealt with... I have dealt with him unfairly, and it's my own fault. I see. Uh, perhaps uh, we can also help you set up with a new apothecarist. Or um, perhaps uh, you could go on our behalf, unbeknownst to... Um, yes, that's good. That, that could be an option, yes. If you could somehow procure some sort of uh, medicinal aid. Mm-hmm. I would um, I would gladly pay for it. How much is needed? How many doses? Well, uh, as last count, um, there was six in in dire straits. Um, young Dalen had uh, had a fever yesterday, but he said he's feeling better today. You did not. Uh, we didn't hear the sound of him screaming or anything. You didn't harm him at all. We harm no one. Except for the Crenshaw. <laughs> the bugs, the burritos at the door, we harm Yeah, them. and the cat. We harm no humans that we can remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so Dalen, um, maybe he's been fighting the sickness for the last week or so, but I see. He, seems to be, um, he seems to be doing fairly well. Well, back on the business with this Veltargo, when... when do, does your organization know where we can find Veltargo at this point? Um, as far as I knew, he was a priest of Arth, so the Temple of Arth would be the place. But I you would... also mentioned he smelled of Marsh. Yes. So he may not. Uh, he may not even be known to them. Mm. So what? Do, what do we know about this marsh that he just mentioned? Is there something nearby? The Great Salt Marsh. Yeah, it's um, that's yeah. where you go hunting all the time. And that's a big area, right? It's a huge area. Right. And, uh, yeah. So anything that I can roll to, like, maybe get a sense of where this character might be or hang out if uh, he were to visit the marsh? Like, is there a seedy area or something that... uh, You you mentioned he also smelled like he used um, that whatever, right? Yeah. Um... So let's see here. Um, who amongst you would have been the ones who were combing through um, all Popoff's letters? One of the academics. <laughs> Probably either uh, Zed Probably or, Arthur, right? or, or Asami or Arthur. Maybe a little. But I certainly probably wouldn't have been the primary reviewing that. I was looking through the summoning books and such. I don't know if I had time. Okay. 
Uh, you do remember the name Veltargo was mentioned in um, some of the stack of papers that you procured from uh, Popov's house. So some sort of check with difficulty? Uh, either that or you could pop back over to your um, your home and collect. Review the, collect. review the papers? Yeah, you're not far away. Okay. Um... Any other information you can provide us about uh, Veltargo that perhaps might afford us um, some advantage? Uh, real thin, uh, crooked teeth. All right. Um, Hawk-like nose. And um, is he a uh, human? Yes, as far as I know. Mm-hmm. Probably when he visited about, you. Probably a Go little ahead. bit shorter than myself. Which is what? Uh, it's like five ten ish. Okay. And was he in priest robes when he visited you? Yes, yeah, the robes of uh, the vestments of the priests of Arth. Right. Okay. All right. Um. Very well. Any he looks to the party. Anyone have any other questions before we review this at our uh, convenience? Would you be willing to um, go over to um, Silas Ledbetter's apothecary and um, of course a- explain that uh, maybe you have a car? Is he open now? Uh, he lives. He lives just above the uh, shop. So if he's not open, uh, you could probably wake him up. Although it's not that late; it's only like eight o'clock at night. Oh, I thought it was like, oh, right, the other apothecary was closing, but it's not necessarily like midnight or something. No, nothing like that. You got okay, to, all right. you got to um, barge end around 6 o'clock. Okay. Uh, what is the name of the apothecarist? Uh, Ledbetter's Apothecary. Ledbetter? Yep. I'll just type it up. Have, have I heard of the place? That would be a knowledge local, right? Or yeah, would, uh, I would say... Um, Knock would probably have a better chance to have passed by it. All right. Um, okay. Yes, we uh, uh, timing is of the essence here for your sick and wound uh, for your sick and disease. We will uh, make that a priority. Uh, so it's um just north of the Street of the Gods on Wall Street. So you would go from here. Uh, go down to the Street of the Gods and then make, uh, or actually, go down Hazy Street to the Wall Street, and it would it would just be on your right hand side. All right, um, we take note of that. He um, comes and down. Of course, we comes down the stairs. And of course, we uh, we do this uh, that uh, in, the, in the hope that you won't forget this small favor too soon. Of course, yes. We it's uh, it's appreciative. We could be at each other's throats here, but it's. Uh, Perhaps fruitful that we've met. Um, he's got a, a, like a little pouch. And he says, if in this pouch is uh, 400 silver smear ducks. If you could procure your um, seven doses of anti-plague, um, you can keep the remainder. If, if there is any change, he may overcharge for the trouble. If he finds out that it's for us, he won't sell to you. All right, and these doses that we know is supposed to cure? Uh, is there a name for it? or It's not going to cure. It's going to help. Okay. And he gave us how much? He gave you 400 silver smear ducks. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, we'll do... We'll, we will not, um, we will not um, mention of you and your organizations. Uh, we are adventurers, and we will make it as though we are purchasing for our own use. Uh, I appreciate that, and uh, and she uh, goes up to retrieve the the pouch. Yeah, um, Sarathis hands or, it over. Or actually, she uh, you know, as adventures go, holds up her hand and allows him to just throw it or toss it. No, he walks down the stairs and. Uh, oh, he did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. He he hands it over and he shakes your hand. All right, sounds good. Uh, if if you're duping us, then you know. We have nothing left anyway, so. All right. So desperation um, makes strange bedfellows. Well, 
just so you know, we gain XP from <laughs> <laughs> from for, killing you or from the, the parlaying. So exactly, we're all good here. <laughs> for every thug I save, I gain a bonus two hundred experience points. <laughs> Four hundred Schmidux would buy a nice, nice looking outfit. It would. Uh, all right. So if there's nothing here, anyone else have any questions for this uh, for our host? Our bene- beneficial mutual uh, business uh, moment momentarily business partner here. All right, all right, we're gonna head out. Um, and do you have a do you have a a signal for your your uh, your your boys to uh, leave us alone as we leave? The, there isn't anyone left. Well, there's one. Uh, fellow who uh yeah i'm who sure was doing his job you know but uh you know, i'm sure want to make sure that there's no misunderstanding yeah. as we leave yeah. i'm sure dalen's dalen knows but dalen he shouts uh you're to let them in if they come when they come back and you hear like a kind of a meek all right all right knock on nods pleasure and we'll see you soon with that she takes her leave all right so down um down Carter Street to Hazy, over Hazy to Wall Street. Wall Street's one of the biggest streets in the city. Um, I don't know if you have the map up, but it runs from the Citadel of the Emperor all the way down the length of the wall um, to the end gate. So it's the entire length of the city. It's one of the main streets. And uh, in this area, there isn't really anything up against the walls. There's some kind of shanties and stuff like that kind of perched up against the wall. Some kind of uh, makeshift lean-tos on top of one of those, like a shack on top of another shack on top of another shack kind of thing. There isn't any really um, permanent buildings here. This section of town is pretty poor. Um when, as you get further south, getting towards the Marsh Gate, um, you see a rather large building on the right-hand side. Um, and at the bottom of the building, um, half of the establishment, um, there's a, a big um, shingle that sticks out. And you see uh, a mortar and a pestle uh, pa- painted onto the shingle. And it just says lead betters. And there's a, there's a light coming from the inside. There's probably two or three other storefronts at the bottom of this building. And you imagine there's, I don't know, maybe three or four more floors on top of it. Some of them are probably tenements. Some of them, some of them might be businesses. Uh, Ledbetters has the most prominent um, corner. And it, it looks like a fairly, fairly large uh, storefront for this area of town anyway. It's um, this kind of uh, setup wouldn't be out of place in the wealthier cash district, but the fact that it's in the rundown marsh district is kind of out of place. So it makes it fairly easy to find and, and see. And also, if you wanted to, uh, Zed's apartment is the, um, I believe, the other side of uh, the Street of the Gods. Well, I'd say we just knock. Maybe he's open. Yeah, he's definitely open. You can see a light on inside. The door doesn't appear to be locked. Just walk in like we're casually shopping for goods. Okay, you walk in. And uh, there's three or four men um, behind a counter near the back. And they look they look like they might be busy, busily going about some things. And um, in a chair on the other side of uh, a bunch of like shelves and and tables and stuff like that is a man with uh, like an old man. He's probably about in his seventies, and he's got um, he's got like gray hair, but he's bald in the middle, and it's pulled back into a ponytail, and he's got like a like a long scraggly gray um goatee and he's got a a pair of spectacles 
And he's um, he looks like he's reading through a book, flipping it. And then there's uh, there's like shelves and um, tinctures and tonics and all kinds of stuff. Sounds like the comic book store owner on The Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, but but not as heavy. It's exactly it. But and gray hair and not as heavy. He looks up from his book. Hello. Welcome to Leadbetters. What can I help you with? Your speaker go. I'm not sure. We're looking for, I think it's called, and she's saying it like this, like she doesn't specifically know, but I think it's called like an anti-plague uh, serum to help if, if for those that, you know, should one be sick. I see. I see. Is there any any specific uh, any specific admixture you're interested in? Um, so we're heading down to the uh, to the sewers, um, ah. and we're looking for something. So should one of us contract something down there? I see. We, you're looking we have for a cure. Filth fever, uh, blinding sickness, that sort of thing. Correct. Yes. Okay. That's right. He knew. He knew what we we're talking about. Cool. Uh, you're you're aware they're fairly expensive. We imagine so. Um, that's why we're trying to s see what it is that we can afford. I see. Okay. Or perhaps you have like a, a bulk discount or something. Five or more maybe for perhaps. I see. I see. Maybe we can. Uh, let's see here. Let me see what I have on hand. He, he gets up and he's like. Oh, oh, oh. Puts his book down and kind of slowly makes his way and he says i'm silas ledbetter by the way it's good to meet you i don't believe i've seen you in my store before are you uh new to lankamar relatively relatively we're adventures as you can see ah she she stands up kind of proudly just to display playing up the 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 role the real and the imagined role the adventures of youth i see did uh did that rascal Jagard Stanton, uh, did he secure you to uh, to see about those tr the trouble in the sewers? Hmm. I've not heard of that name, but uh, perhaps we may run into him. But nope, this is something uh, that we're, uh, we're... Never mind then. Perhaps I'm talking out of school. This is some. This is our own volition, and we are exploring on our own. I see. Okay. I see. I, um... I've got enough for 10 doses. Um, I can sell it for 50 Smerducks per dose. Uh, there's no guarantees of the efficiency of it. Um, it will help you, if you're healthy already, uh, fight off the, the sickness. What kind of guarantee would we have Did we contract it? Uh, there is no real guarantee unless you know some sort of uh, miracle worker on the street of the gods who's able to. Fair, fair. So, 10 for 50 each, that would be 500 for the lot then. Is that correct? For Did the, I do my math right? Yes. For the lot, I could go... I could go 420 for all 10. Oh, we got a bag, yeah. four hundred right here to hand you. That's a diplomacy to haggle, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She holds this out the four hundred. Oh, this is just a little bit light for four twenty, but uh, would four hundred be suffice? No questions asked, and we hand it over right now. Mm, it has been slow. Yes. Yeah, I believe I'll be able to do that. You Very well then. We 10? have a deal. And before we uh, shake on it, can I do a sense motive to see sure. if I get a feeling he's actually selling us something, or is it colored water? <laughs> yeah. If you and if you have any uh, alchemical or um, any herbalist or uh, naturalist skills, you can definitely examine what he's what he's offering to. Seems legit. <laughs> well, fifteen's a pretty good roll. I mean, unless. Unless this person was uh, some sort of haggler and had a, like a big bonus in bluff, 
you know, you probably have a pretty good chance of sorting anything out. Well, does he seem? Do the do, do Spidey sense go off, or do I? No, no, the Spidey sense doesn't go off. Um, you've got um, three guys in the back uh, back corner. They they look like they're producing some sort of chemical thing. Um, they look like they're fairly knowledgeable. They're um, probably in their mid to, I would say, mid twenties to mid thirties. Um, like maybe, um, maybe journeyman alchemists, and uh, Silas would be the the master, and they're uh, they're probably here working off an apprenticeship of some sort. You know, everything in Lancomars is based on guilds, and um, so they're probably serving some sort of apprenticeship or, or or working through their journeyman to to get master status. Uh, so they look. Based on everything you see here, all the uh, all the chemicals and reagents, everything labeled professionally and neat. Um, it doesn't look like there's any armed guards around, which is unusual for Lancamar. Um, so there might be something to that too. Uh, you also mentioned uh, that this this is on I forget the name of the street. Wall Street. Yeah, Wall Street. It, this is Wall Street's a very poor street, isn't it? Uh, this section of Wall Street is very poor. The Marsh District is very poor. Mm. Uh, so, and this section of town is overrun with gangs, one of which you're dealing with right now. Um, yeah, because the thing is, it's a very poor street, but a very, at least high, mid to high class uh, building mm -hmm. stands out from the others, has no guards. It seems a bit strange. It does. It's definitely out of place. But uh, yeah, he's uh, so he walks you over to uh, this area, and they've got um, like um, almost like a rack of, uh, of vials of the uh, the anti plague, and uh, he starts uh, putting them into um, like a, a soft leather pouch uh, wrapped up in um, almost like a, like a, a cloth to protect the the bottles and he gets yeah. them all kind of professionally neatly wrapped for you 10 doses for 400 that's a, it's a reasonable deal um, yeah, before before money exchanges hands arthur will pipe up with i'm not certain 10 is quite necessary i believe we could probably do with seven that's one for each of us as well as a spare in case we need it seven a eh? Silas looks around. Well, seven would... The original price of 50 per... Uh, I would probably go 320 for seven. Not as big of a discount, but of course, you're not buying quite as much. Looking back to the rest of the party, see if they agree with that. Uh, I'm good for either, but uh, I don't want to get sick in those such sewers. I mean, can't perform if I'm coughing and hacking. That's what the spare is for. I'm good. Whatever you guys want to do. So you're you're saying buy an extra seven? No, he's just, he's just saying seven. he's saying buy seven instead of ten. And uh, and pocket the eighty gold, the eighty silver smerdux between you guys. Yes, and he's justifying with there's six of us. Let's get a spare so he doesn't have questions on where we're getting exactly seven. Wait, so I'm um, I'm um, okay. So we got ten already, right? Are we getting more? No, no, no. no. He's saying instead like, of Arthur, the ten, said, in, instead of ten, let's get seven. Because but that's going to change. Did did he change the price? Yeah, he he was he went three twenty for the seven. As opposed to four hundred for the ten. Oh, uh, okay, I missed that part. All right, seven sounds good. I mean, we don't. We, we, don't need it. we we already got some, right? And um, as far as we know, we we have something that's similar, right? Yeah, some some if of you have. Same. Some yeah. Of, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Also, uh, I'm already forgetting his name, but he only asked for seven, didn't he? He did. Yeah, yeah, he asked for seven, but you know what? I think I think four hundred. 
for the price of 500 is pretty good. We we get three to keep. That's a pretty good deal. So I think we should get 10 and pay the 400. That's fine. 80, smear, 80 silver smeardos can buy you a lot of things. But you're the one buying. Right now, it's not our money. We're getting three... three of these potions for free, but if you feel like 80 three. smear ducks can get us better than three that cost 150, I don't know. I mean, the math is pretty clear to me, but if you feel like 80 can go further than getting three potions, then uh, I'll, I'll take your lead on it. 80 but. smear ducks is universal. These potions have a very narrow use. But I will not argue any further. It's ultimately your decision. Well, it's not my decision per se, but uh, but I I just I can't see where having these on hand would be a bad thing. Extra. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, Silas uh, says um, yes. If you were to contract, uh, if you were to spend any time down in the sewers, uh, you're gonna want one of these on hand. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with with what Ar Arthur's. Uh, um, reasoning, and we'll just take the the seven, and we'll keep the eighty, and see if keeping that money on hand might be useful. Okay, I will throw eighty silver smear ducks in the party sheet. Done and done. Okay, where to now, fellas? Going straight back to the Green Daggers, or are you heading nope, down to nope. Zed's? We we should sightsee a little bit. Yeah, let's wink, not wink, wink, nod, nod. <laughs> okay, where to? What do you mean? What do you mean? I uh, well, in character, I wouldn't say why. Out of character, I would gladly tell you why. I don't know where the DM. Would why? Be why wouldn't you say it in character? Because. Uh, Silas. Because, yeah, I'm not yeah. going to say, let's run back to the guy we just bought this for, you know? I mean, yeah, exactly. In, in case we're being followed, we don't... Oh, why not say it to the party, unless if you have... Oh, I can't. Yeah, but... yeah. Mm -hmm. he's just saying yeah. he, he wants to do it out of earshot from the... Oh, the right, 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 right. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm assuming that you guys finished no, your transaction. You guys, whatever, it don't matter. I just, I didn't want... If I told you, then the guy we're talking to is like, really? No. You know. <laughs> well, the price just went up. Uh, yeah. So I'm assuming you guys are um, good with the seven doses for 320. Um, Silas says, well, it's, uh, it's a pleasure doing business with you. We're, uh, hmm. We usually stay open till around this time of night. So, um, oh, or we'll you keep can that get in mind. Early in the morning as well. Usually we start at daybreak and uh, go to a few hours past sunset. So. Do you All right. carry potions that cure injuries? Say I cut myself on a nail and I want to heal it. Do you have things like that? I do. I uh, I do. It's um, not something that I advertise. Uh, but uh, I could... Would such things run? Uh, yeah. I would, Translating look like a cure yeah, light wounds would yeah. be fifty gold, but fifty I don't know gold, what that, fifty gold yeah. real. So it'd be five five hundred gold, five hundred silver smear ducks for, for just one potion. Yeah, yeah, I know, it's crazy. All right, um, yeah. hey, we're off uh, to with our adventuring. Then uh, we'll we'll keep uh, we'll keep you in mind. Now we know where we can make deals, uh, and if we come up with uh, some, uh, if we find some. Uh, Something that looks like it could be um, reagents. Uh, we maybe we'll bring back and uh, and and do exchanges. Oh, are you? Um, where are you? Uh, ad ad he holds up his fingers. Adventuring. Uh, oh, for now the sewers, but who knows? Along the way, we're adventurers. We're open to ideas, you know. And uh, that's something that uh, I I do a lot of hunting, uh, as you can see. Mm-hmm. And uh, perhaps out in the open, out in the wild, I can find ingredients here and there. And if you have a list, do you uh, do you get to the marsh much? Do you, do I you can. do hunting in the marsh. I do a lot of hunting there. So there we have it. If you have a list, why don't you give it to me and see what I can do? I don't have anything on hand, but um, I can. Uh, I will keep you in mind. Anything off the top of your head? 
Is there anything anywhere I could contact you should uh, should I have a need? Um, how about I pop in every other day or something? That's out. Or mind. once a week. I'm across the street there. Just slip a note under the door. I'll, I'll get a, I'll get oh, there we go. One of my allies is nearby. And... Okay. I will uh, I'll make note of this. He writes down the uh, the Zed's apartment building and, and the apartment number. Okay. Okay. Well, oh, we're excited about it, our adventure. Adventuring. Uh, we we got to be off. Oh, of course, yes, yes. We. Uh, I don't. I don't want to keep these men any longer than they have to. Would it? If fifty silver snow ducks. Was that the cost, or is it five hundred? Five, five, five times. Fifty yeah. silver snow ducks for or, or five, fifty gold rooks. Fifty gotcha. gold rooks, yeah. F- yeah, which is I, for five hundred silver. Before yeah. that's I. I thought I had that much money, but apparently it's a tenth of what I can afford. So anyway, <laughs> well, I'll get one. Uh, I have oh, to- blowing five hundred uh, smear ducks well, for one potion, huh? All right. Having a potion of healing. Handy, hey, handy I'm not saying thing. I'm not yeah. saying that's a bad idea. I'm just like, wow. Well, some I will ask got him. If some money saved enough, up. Kind enough to uh, do forty five. Let's see for, here. You know, a, a starting adventures. Considering that I. Uh, Let's see. Uh, give me a uh, shoot me a diplomacy. She winks at him. Said, "Please, <laughs> dog eyes." And perhaps for my friend here, if you give him a discount, first batch of uh, ingredients uh, is on us. I give okay. him a plus two, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, you can diplomacy. Let me try to aid with the DC tenor. Good yeah. job. Yeah. Plus two. Okay, so that puts it over 21. Yeah, okay. All right, that's a good damn diplomacy if there is one. 21. All right, so let me put a potion of healing or cure light wounds. So it was the agreement with 45? Yes, 45. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Little teamwork diplomacy there. Yep. Very good. And put that in there. Let me adjust it a little bit. Thank you. You're welcome. And so how do I grab it? I have to uh, go get, to the party? Yeah, I'm going to put it on the party sheet right now. You should see it oh, come gotcha. on there. And then you should be able to drag the little uh, piezo icon right onto your inventory sheet. There you go. Not if I grab it first. <laughs> the anti-plague that's there... Yeah, I, I put the, I put a bunch of them up there because um, people were gra- water, right? yeah people were grabbing them last session. You know, I never did. I know I bought one. But okay. I don't think I dragged it over, so that's probably mine that's left. Let me <laughs> let me put uh, yeah well, there we go. Oh, you know what? It, it was hidden. I um, it's okay. Now I have two. I should have only had one. I, it's okay. I put- Not a problem. Just change the number from two to one, or okay. delete it. Not a problem at all. I will keep that in mind. He says with the uh, um, for the first batch of reagents kind of thing. He says um, I was uh, I was contemplating something, so uh, I haven't quite nailed down my formula yet, but. Uh, when I do, I will have a need for something. Very well. We have a deal. We do. And uh, good luck. Good luck in the uh, the sewers. Um, hope you find what you're looking for. Indeed, indeed. We appreciate that. You can... Uh, companions? Companions? Are we uh, ready? Let yep. us be off. Tell him we're going adventuring now. Goodbye. <laughs>
Good night, adventurers. Be brave. So Silas, uh, yeah, he kind of walks you to the door and smiles. He seems like a pretty nice guy, actually. So for Serathis to have uh, fucked him bad enough that he won't do business with him at all. All right. Probably not cool. Yeah. We can also help him set up with the other apothecarist if he doesn't screw him over, too. Yeah, it's true, too. Okay, where to now, adventurers? All right, time is of the essence. Go back to Zarathus. I would say we should take this non-direct path and make sure we're not followed. Okay. Maybe down to the the Street of the Gods and then back up around the other way or back up to... uh, Okay. We can just wait till the next day. I don't think it. To determine if we're um, being followed, that'd be perception, right? So someone who's a sharp eye would just take a casual look back, see. If yeah, you, you could. Uh, you could, or you could formulate some sort of plan to uh, maybe. All right. So uh, you know, Naka can. Who has a pretty good stealth? Naka can slip away in the shadow and let you guys move on, and then just watch who's if someone's following you. Not a bad plan. All right, someone create diversion. We'll just like, you know, Naka will just slip away into an alley or something and just watch the party continue forward. And Okay. Okay, so N- Naka watches... Like in a crowd or something, you know. Yeah. So N- Naka sl- slips around and then goes around the back of the, uh, the apothecary and there's a bunch of alleys and stuff like that. She's been through here a f- more than a few times. Yeah. Um, she uh, she makes her way back out, kind of sort of around to the other side, and she can see the the group walking down Wall Street towards the Street Let's of the Gods. Alay uh, Asami's uh, Asami's uh, um, what's the word? Suspicions. Suspicions. Man, yeah. I'm just lost for words tonight. <laughs> That's uh, okay. So there's there's uh, we know there's trouble here. So uh, wouldn't we be cautious about yeah. it? We knew that they didn't have a good relationship. So. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, you see, there's a the streets are fairly crowded. So, um, there's a there's people behind them, people in front of them. You you watch. You kind of um, kind of make note of anybody that might stand out. Um, you kind of dart around. Uh, you come up between a couple of temples on the street of the gods, and you pick them back up again. Um, Teddy's just kind of like. Skittering around, she grabs a rat, crushes its skull, uh, has a little snack as she's uh, going along with you. And then you see uh, several people that you saw kind of behind them before, but they really don't look like they're paying much attention. And they continue down Wall Street, and the group continues up the Street of the Gods. So uh, you kind of keep to the keep to the alleys a little bit and make your way around. And as everybody c- kind of gets back on Carter Street, you don't see any familiar faces or anything like that. So you would guess that you haven't been followed. All right, we'll just uh, catch up to the group. And like, as far as I know, within the past half hour or so, it doesn't seem like we're being followed. So That's good. Okay, so you head, head back up Carter Street towards the Green Daggers hideout? Yep. Okay. So you get back up there, and uh, you knock on the door, and uh, young Dalen opens the door. He's the the guy that was, <laughs> was shitting his pants with the crossbow. Uh, uh-huh. He said, come in, come in, Cyrus. This is, uh, was waiting for you if you want to. No, Naka kind of squeezes his cheeks. See, we, I told you we'd be friends. Yes, it's, uh, I'm, I'm glad I didn't shoot you. Very. All right. Uh, yeah, well, so, uh, yeah, so... Can we wait here and you can fetch your master? I will, I will. I'll go get him. And uh, you're kind of in like the the, the waiting area, the, the the front hallway sort of deal. And uh, Serathis and Delta. And uh, now... Along with them, there's two others. There's two twin halfling women. Um, they they look 
Like they are a nasty bit of business. Um, and they're just kind of like off to the side. And it, it's almost like when you look at them, you're seeing double. They, they're identical. They're dressed okay. the same. Um, they look the same. Um, and they've got uh, they've got short swords, uh, twin short swords each, and uh, they look pretty rough and tumble. Um, but Cyrathus comes in and and says, um, "Hello, uh, I'm I'm glad you came back. With uh, I was half expecting you to never see you again." So. Oh, nonsense! And then uh, she's gonna do a quick motive, sense motive on those two new characters to see if he's cool with them or if he. Yeah, if he's like uh, sensing. If she's sensing anything, it seems like she doesn't pick up anything. No, she she gets the that these two are part of the gang. Yeah, attack them! They, attack them! Do they look sick? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask. Are these the are they the same men that we saw in the the bunks? We haven't seen them before. No, no, you haven't seen these halflings before. They're uh, probably hiding when we came in the first time. Just in are case. they wearing the same? Uh, does the do they have a certain insignia? on? Uh, no, but they're dressed identically in in leathers and um, in dark leathers and. Uh, mm. uh, uh, they were gonna do a sneak damage if we try something funny the first time. Yeah, they came. They came <laughs> down through the kitchen. Uh, they were they were elsewhere in the house, and there's um. There's secret ways through. Mm-hmm. Yep, they, were, yep. they were gonna come in behind you guys. If something. seems legit to me. But they, yeah, Not they. Uh, we're we're pe- we're we're a bunch of uh, of our words. Well, that's uh, it's good to uh, good to know that. And with with that, she produces the uh, the potions. And here you are, straight from uh, straight from Leadbetter. Oh, well, she takes and, them. Uh, if it doesn't work, don't blame it on us, because we got it straight from his hands. Yeah, he he, he looks through it, and you can see the professional way that it was packed. In that it's not any kind of slipshod thing or anything like that. You'll and buy, uh, there'd be buy no way that, or something or yeah, whatever. Yeah, there'd be no way you'd be able to put it together that quickly. Yeah, with the uh, with the Leadbetter logo on it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, he says, uh, Risa and Tisa, take these two um, to the sick. And that the the two halfling women just give him a nod, and they shoot through the uh, the double doors. To the north, um, where the dead Crenshaw is, and um, he he doesn't. Uh, Sarathus doesn't bring it up, so it's probably the price of doing business here. <laughs> uh, well, if there's nothing else here, we uh, want to go and rest and investigate Veltargo tomorrow. If you uh, if you find that snake, you take care of him. Or you bring him here, and I'll take care of him. Uh, we'll see what our options are. We don't like to get our hands dirty if it's not our business. But we'll see. Well, I, uh, you've made a friend in Cyrathus. I'll have you know that. That we have, extending her hand. And he uh, he shakes his hand, shakes your hand. You can never have too many friends. All right, business another time, my my good, uh, my new friend. And then uh, she looks at the other, you know, getting the cue if they have any other questions and before turning away and leaving. All right. Let's yeah, see. DM, this group is called the Green something. I, I Green Dagger. Green Dagger. The Green Dagger. Yeah. Right. They don't have any if you look in the notes... Special. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. Um, can you repeat that? They don't have anything uh, for sale that's special, do they? Okay. Oh, these guys? We talked to them before. They, they're they pretty depleted in terms of men and resources. Yeah. I think he said he gave us that gold to buy these, uh, the, the seven doses. It, it sounded like it's a pretty desperate attempt there. Yeah. Also, you want me to check the notes. Uh, the notes only go up to session seven. The notes are a bit behind. When they get back on their feet, would they, you know, in a month or two, would it be a good place for us to go get weapons, armor, something? Uh, you know, I'm sorry, it's really hard to... Is there any way you can move the mic a little but bit Alex, further? Alex asked if, by the time they get back on their feet, are they going to be 
are we going to be able to get some equipment from them, be able to buy some stuff? Oh, yeah. From, the, from yeah. these guys? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you, you guys did see some equipment in the room just across the hall from where the big staircase was. Okay. Uh, the reason I mentioned notes is I think it should appear at the top with my name on it. So that's shared so you can review it if you want to add notes to it. Yeah, for the uh, like the player's ah. notes. Yeah. You mean the brazen drunken thieves hook? Okay. <laughs> yes. Ah, I see. Do I have in here? Yes, there is in the notes. There is uh, Popoff's correspondence with Veltargo. We're also on the roleplay channel. Yeah. Yeah. You said there was gear lying on the floor. There was gear on in a, on a table um, in the room just opposite of where Bakai is. Uh, okay. Not the big room, the other room. Is they had among the gear. Is it weapons or is it like crap on hooks and climbing gear? And they had um, a bunch of. There's some rapiers, daggers, like crossbows. That's exactly what I want is a rapier. <laughs> oh. All right, so uh, how'd you know? They have sensing, uh, eyeballing a rapier. Sensing that the party is interested in that, uh, she turns quickly over to Serathis. Serathis, if you don't mind, if uh, we uh, we check out whatever's left over in your weaponry there. Uh, to help us with our our uh, our goals here, w would you mind with that? You maybe you... borrow a thing or two. Uh I I have uh, an expensive rapier to sell, or uh, I would give you one. Is it was it a rapier you were after? I think you mentioned. Yep, that depends on how much he wants for it. Yeah. Uh, the masterwork rapier, it would be. Um, Standard prices in Smerdux, so um, like probably three hundred or something. Yeah, three hundred and three hundred and twelve or whatever the regular yeah. one is. Yeah, it's yeah. in silver Smerdux, or uh, just the regular, oh, regular regular rapier. He said he would give. Yeah, regular regular he would give you for free to say thanks. Uh, regular would be what I need or what I could get. Uh, not right. those whispers to. Uh, Asami, Asami, right? Yeah. Don't use up our favors too quickly. Oh, it's just. But you need that. what? What? But you need what you need. It says she's looking like she's always wanted one, and she uses the poker like a rapier. On our way out, she pats yeah, Asami everyone, on the back. Go for it, girl. These. Yeah, not everyone sells these. No, know, so, it's yeah. true. It's quite expensive, but he's. Uh, he says. Um, uh, Delta, fetch one of those uh, rapiers. Not the, uh, not the keen one. No, not that one. Keen? Oh, you have would, a keen one? Yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, uh, I think, two thousand or something. No, it's masterwork actually. So it would be uh, three hundred and six. Yeah, I th gold that's ropes. So a little high. So yeah, outrageously high. All right. If that's, there's nothing else, uh, we can just go back and he rest also, and review our options for tomorrow. He also has a couple sets of thieves' tools, um, some like alchemist fire, that kind of thing. I don't I don't know if you're interested in anything like that. Uh, I don't think I can use thieves' tool. I'm not proficient in that. It's not my class. Do you have um, Do you have disabled device? How much for the thieves' tools? Uh, Baka has a twelve on disabled. Yeah, it's thirty silver smerdux. So standard price. Yeah, I'll take it. Okay, let me throw it in the. Let's make that one. There we go. I'm on my um, earbuds. Is this any better? Yeah. It's oh, quite... much, much, much better. Tug. Actually, no, okay. no, no problem with the truck continually running in the background. <laughs> it sounded right. like you were getting on... a delivery. <laughs> it's not like you're on the highway and you're you're in the rain and you're hiding behind a truck or something. 
I, I don't stay in the best hotels, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the company probably appreciates that. All right. Was there anything else that uh, we may be able to purchase off this guy? Yeah. Is there is there anything in particular you're looking for? I, I've I don't, I I was asking for the party. I wasn't actually looking for anything specific. Any anyone else? Bef going once, going twice, kind of thing here before we leave this place. I am considering getting a getting a light cross would give me a damage up. Okay, yeah, he's there. They have two light crossbows. Um, let's see here. We're still in good, good, good standing in in his eyes for this moment, so might as well just make good use of it. Yeah, you know what? He'll give you a light crossbow. Just give. Just give. Excellent. And he says, not. "If you guys are looking for any work, keep keep me in mind." Of course. I hear you are. Uh, uh, you were fair with uh, Tusk. Uh, Iron Tusk does good work, um, and he's reliable. He had no complaints about you. A transaction was made. When the uh, when the service was was uh, delivered, in our eyes, that's that's good. He was um, he delivered the item quickly, and uh, so of course we'll keep you in mind. All right, well, um, hopefully you uh, you find what you're looking for, and um, hopefully some of my men pull through. Godspeed. Uh, with that, she takes her leave. Do you guys want to do some rolls to, uh, to to formulate some saves for these guys to see how many survive and how many you've saved? <laughs> what? You want to rely on us? Yes, <laughs> I'll let you guys make the rolls. They are, um, <laughs> let's see here. Oh my god. So yes. let's see, I think it's con rolls, right? Yeah, let me see what their con is. Uh, fortitude is plus two. And then we're adding plus five for the man, the um, the anti plague. I can aid them, and the DC is thirteen. I can aid them. I don't want to roll for them. I can aid them. I no. I, I want you guys to roll for them just to see how many. We'll just do how one, many we're gonna kill. We'll do. We'll just do <laughs> one set straight through, and then we'll. Uh, can we do? Uh, you, you, there you go. There is a survivor. Oh, Naka kills one. So it's actually plus seven. So it didn't quite make it. You're shooting for um, a six. Six on a D20. Does that mean Asami casually, you know, oh. pours the thing in her mouth carefully until she was able to ingest it all? And, or the person who she was feeding? And that's <laughs> why they saved Is that it? Yeah, exactly. Your nurse made it. <laughs> Arthur's got to save. Oh, Bakai's got a kill. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so two more left. So this is not an enema bottle. Damn it. <laughs> so far, 50 50, guy. <laughs> for two. One, two for two. There, there's oh, one. Two. Three. There's another one. That's a save, right? That's a save. You said 13? Yeah, 13. Yeah, he said 13, yeah. All right. That's two for two. All, all the way to another one, or is that it? One more. All right, let's see if it's 50-50 or better than 50-50 here. It's either 50-50 or... Wait, who, who's, a, who's, a, who's the... Who's going to make the roll? Maybe you can open up uh, the ones who are absent and, and throw a roll on that one. Uh, I I'll, can see... You want me to shoot it? Let's go for three for three, actually. All right, let's go for... See if... Three for three. Arthur Nightingale. Uh, three for three. Oh, Look at yeah, that. there you go. All right. I am in All positions. Right. Arthur so the Medic. Let's see here. I was considering making a physician. Arthur died. You know you have to you have to put a point into healing when you level now. You know that. Damn. All right. So I will award you guys your experience points for that. Well done. 
3,000. That's not bad. So you guys are at 38.79. Uh, 5,000 gets you there. So you're about 1,100 and change away. Hey, we can level to we can level to three by the year's end. <laughs> <laughs> Being a bi-weekly game that, that sounds right. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure that by June we'll be there. I would say by the end of uh, by the end, definitely by the end of this adventure. Yeah, this adventure ends in June. <laughs> Actually, I got this. This is um. This is Jason Bowman's. I don't know if you know who he is. This is his first ever published adventure. Oh, really? Yeah, from the pages of Dungeon Magazine. I, yeah. I've changed it considerably, but yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he's, so we saved four out of six of them. Good. Yeah, you save, you know, right, not right away, but just to save a bunch of rolls. Uh, over the next week or so, four survive, two pass away. Yeah. I've already given well, you experience points for it. Just gets it out of my. That's better than none. Yes, and it's um, you got way more experience points than if you killed them. That's for sure. Where to now, gentlemen? I think it's later, and uh, we should just go and rest and uh, make plans for tomorrow on how we can go uh, find this dude, right? Yeah, it's around it's around nine o'clock at night, maybe nine thirty. Uh, the marsh district's starting to come alive with uh, junkies and ne'er do wells, and the transients are starting to shift around, trying to find themselves a place for for the night. Um, probably not a bad time to get out of dodge and get back to the uh, to the tenderloin. Although you can't believe you're actually saying that, um, the tenderloin's more like a rough and tumble as opposed to desperate. So are we kind of hanging out having a drink, folks, or uh, what's the deal? Nine o'clock's too early to retire, right? Well, you guys tell me. Where to? I'm, I'm asking the party. Anyone? Anyone? I do have some con damage yeah. I would like to get rid of. Do you? Since when? Yes. <laughs> uh, since I got bitten twice by those uh, things. Fuck, uh... Those, uh, I forget what they're called. They're... I think you, uh, you get a... You get it back when you rest. The surges, yeah, right? Surge, surge, yeah. Yeah, surges, that's the call. I, I get yeah. them back when I rest, yeah, more of that. Full day's rest. Yeah, yeah. Um, on our ability, ability temporary damage, you can rest and get it back. Um, you get it back at a point yeah. of one per day. Yeah. Yeah, it's one per day. It's yeah. The damage, damage is the one that's... Uh, that's there's also it. also the lingering specter of the failed fortitude save too. Yeah, that'll never come up. <laughs> uh, so as you're worried about, as Arthur's worrying about uh, his uh, his health, uh, Naka will mention that I have an idea. Perhaps to suss out this uh, Veltargo from from the temple. Maybe perhaps we can go and uh, mention his name. Saying that uh, a couple of the party members is ill from uh, adventuring down in the sewers, and we heard that uh, Velpargo uh, is known to uh, to provide good potions for such illness or diseases. Maybe he'll suss them out. Where would you drop that info? Well, we just go straight to the temple. Oh, okay, like the Temple of Arth? Yeah. Okay. Where we where we think, you know, if, if he's not there, we might ask for his by name, and maybe they can direct us to another temple where he hangs out, whatever. Okay. Uh, what do you guys think? We're looking for someone that can help him restore his health, right? So, lesser restoration, something like that. No, 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 we're, we're just going small now. We're just saying, like, we, we you know, a couple of our adventuring... Companions have contracted something down the sewers, and we think Veltargo knows how to cure it. Start yeah. with that. Yeah, you heard that there's a priest at this temple named Veltargo, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, we don't mention anything big like, you know, the restoration or the... the okay. That's too big, right? But uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes. See if he shows his face. 
All right. Uh, and then, the, and then if he does, you know, we'll 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 tell him like you know, we'll have to we'll have to come back because we're not quite uh, we don't have quite money or whatever. That that'll give us a chance to to leave there, at least knowing that he's there, and you know, with the promise that we'll come back with enough gold to buy whatever he's offering. Right, and then we can we can then go back and plan how we maybe follow him or whatever when he's away from the temple and then we can deal with him like one on one as opposed to try to deal with him from within the temple maybe he's going to go down to uh you know uh the marshes and we'll follow him see where he goes anybody anybody good idea bad idea we'll definitely go in and ask him for that kind of help would at least point us in the right direction. My only idea was to go drinking and gambling, so this is much better. <laughs> that is well, also or, an idea. Or we, can, yes. we, or we can forget the whole key thing and not do any quests and go gamble and drinking. Hmm. We, we said we're adventurers. Let's pad a resume. Let's do it. <laughs> I mean, gambling and drinking could pad it a little bit, but it won't go too far. I'd prefer to get that 200 gold Wilkes from Pickett. I'd recommend getting that. Yeah. All right. Um, so that's a plan. Yeah. All right. I'm assuming. So, so. who's who's got good diplomacy can uh, can go and make that lie with with the church, or the rest of us can hang out somewhere. You mean bluff? Yeah. I mean uh, a if bluff. It's yeah. Diplomacy. I'm really good at it. It is actually it's a, di diplomacy. It's, it's a diplomacy. When right? I yeah. tell lies at the moment, I'm trying to work on that. But you know, some of us are sick. Right? Yeah. And uh, we're not completely lying, so go no. on the fact that you're white lying. And, uh, they'll make you feel better. That that turns into a I'd, diplomacy. I'd rather bluff, but... Yeah, if you want to bluff and, uh, and, and keep it going, then that's your call. B bluffing, you have to keep it going, right? Diplomacy... That's the truth. It's it's hard to. It's easier to keep the truth than try to keep them up. What I'm saying is, I'm twice as good at lying as I am at telling. Hey, hey! Like I said, if you are confident with it, go for it. Yep. So you guys are formulating your plan as you're walking down the the madness that is the street of gods after. Yeah. After dark, um, some of the temples are lit up with torches, and they're having like ceremonies out front and throngs of followers and there's there's drunken processions and um people of all stripes of life are up and down this street uh as you guys are kind of walking along making your way down um you have no a quick question yes in the party sheet uh is it by choice that you don't share the other party members stats or is that not available um didn't know that I hadn't. Let's have a look. That's under setup, right? All I see is inventory and order. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Yes, yeah, so you I guys want. Promise it's only four, so I yeah. think somebody's better. Let's see here. What's the? Um, do you know off the top of your head what? Um... I do not, but I know it's available. Yeah, so you guys can see what your uh, who's good at what, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. I have uh, no secrets yet. I'm fine with people knowing. Characters to clients. Is that? But before the GM. Uh, How's that? Oh, there it is. Uh, there yep. it is. Okay. Okay. All right. So skills. It's not on here. No skills. No. Oh yeah, yeah. Skills right here. Okay. There we go. All right. So let, we're looking at one thing to note. Bluff is and. For go ahead. Asami, the versatile performance is a little skewed. It says diplomacy three, but it's really much better because yeah. I'm rolling the perform. For it's your the special team. made up yeah. uh, skill, yeah. right? Yeah. Yep, yep. Well, it's it's straight from the bar level too. It's not really made up. No, but but for for the purpose of fantasy oh, grounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I got that right, right. Oh, so we discussed that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not shown. So. so we got a buff bluff of 10. Can you perform do better? Not now. Um, I chose diplomacy. The next time I get versatile performance it'll enhance bluff okay if you're wondering why my languages are question marks it's because i didn't know what to take so yeah i just left them blank for now 
Yeah, we'll leave them blank. And, uh, that's why I said. Oh, it's, it's convenient. You can pick up new languages as we uh, enter, like something that requires yeah, language. Yeah, I know Shadow yeah. Tongue. I've always known Shadow Tongue. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, exactly. There's no question marks there. Realistically, if Shadow Tongue is a language, Arthur probably would know that. Yep. So that's, um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep them blank for now. And if, if something useful comes up, I'll. I'll Wow, got, what a I've, generous GM. I've got to know. Well, there's no sense having you guys um, encounter things that you can't find out about. No, that's, that's fine. I yeah. mean, some GMs are yeah, know, one way and you're one way, which is fine. I yeah. mean, it's very generous, but it's uh, it's cool. Yeah, there's there's 40 different languages or so, and yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to hope you throw a dart and pick the right one so I can <laughs> run my adventure. Hooks, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I am pretty, right, so, pretty liberal when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's that's it's cool. Like, it's not like five you where I'm running a character who knows fifteen languages if you thieve scan to one of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, so down, all right, so it looks like bluff is uh, is our best bet. So uh, go for it. Well, well diplomacy is ten for me, so it's the same. But yeah. Oh, okay. A diplomacy would have less uh, negative consequences than a bluff, so you may want to do that. Wait, so your diplomacy show, shows zero. Is that what you're talking about? When right, you're right. Okay. So versatile performance. I can got it, got it. Check in place of that skill. Got it. Located at the head of the Street of the Gods in the Temple District, if you consult the Lankamar map, you see the big circle uh, over by the river up near the top. That uh, large structure, that is the Temple of Arth. So located at the head of the Street of the Gods of the Temple District, the Temple of Arth is a stately structure of clean marble and simple decoration. Emblazoned above the main entry is a faintly glowing blue eye contained within a pentagram, the all-seeing eye of Arth. A squad of city watchmen is here questioning the priests of Arth individually about, and then you can kind of overhear, um, there's a, a theft at the Great Library last night. So they're, they're, wow, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, so kind of an unexpected twist. Do we know about that? Uh, you haven't heard anything about it yet, but it seems okay. like um, something's going on here, specifically. And there's... Um, Quickly there's, about uh, bluff and diplomacy. Maybe you, you two can work together to synergize between your lies and your diplomacies. To make it better. Make it more I fudge favorable. It in where it shows up on the screen and tells you the real value. But when I actually run okay, it off... Okay, yeah, it's, that's yeah, fine, cool. That way you can see it fairly. Ah, I can see where Luna 7 went when I'm looking at their social. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, let's hang out and listen to more details about this uh, library theft. Yeah, they're going... They're, they're, they're questioning... It sounds like they're questioning each one of the priests, um, one after another. All right, I'm just gonna, you know, like pretend I'm I'm harassed by my own companion and stand nearby and do a listening check to yeah. glean more information. Yeah, it's what just kind the... of questions? What kind of uh, what's what what has gone missing? Yada yada yada. Yeah, yeah but... I'll go ahead and try and listen out for as well, just in case. Okay. Nah, Kind of like off to the side and sort of, you know, trying to get maybe some priest's attention. But they're clearly distracted with something else. So you're kind of overhearing. And then you've got a couple guards who are looking at you guys for a minute. And then uh, there's other people kind of milling around who want to get into the temple as well. So the, the guards are kind of like directing traffic as well. There's probably about eight or ten of them is all kind of like act, act taking questions and there seems to be like one main guy um he's probably just over five feet tall he's kind of squat and he's got this real ratty mustache and his uh hair is kind of combed over to the side and um, is he human looking yeah he's only five feet yeah he's he's okay. human he might even be d dwarvish or like half mm -hmm. dwarvish or something like that mm -hmm. Uh, but he's kind of got that build, kind of like short uh -huh. squat, uh, the comb the comb over hair. Uh, he's kind of balding. He's got kind of like a greasy, dark mustache. He seems to be the um, the head of the guards, 
and um, so he's taking the the priests off individually and asking them questions. And um, you can you overhear that a book was stolen from the great library, and um, it wasn't stolen uh, last night. Now that you hear more about it, it was stolen uh, yesterday morning. Do we catch the name of the book when they're reporting it or in conversation? They ha- it hasn't come out yet. Um, well, I'm curious is if it matches the name of the book. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's I was thinking. We dealt with, right? yeah. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's exactly where this goes. Because after a little bit of time, the book description comes out. So you've never seen a, a book that's three feet wide and has a clasp and has dark mm-hmm. leather. So they the describe... We supposedly had returned to our benefactor who had supposedly returned to the library. Yes. Okay. That had been taken, been returned, and then stolen. We know, we know that our part is true. We return to our benefactor. We trust our benefactor, so we know that part may be true as well. Yeah. And, so at um, one point after that, it's stolen. Okay. Yeah, and that was also confirmed by uh, Rackernash as well. Like Rackernash escorted him to the library to return his books. That's what we hear from the... That's what you, know, that's what you heard from them. Okay. And that was um, that was over a week ago. Mm, okay. All right. It seems like uh, our path in this book has crossed again. Maybe. Um, you also know that um, Danal didn't want Popoff's part to be mentioned at all. Because of his death, his association with the Sorcerer's Guild. Um, that's not part of the book, right? No, but it was that was where you guys found the book. Oh, right. He, right, right. he had loaned it to Pop Off. Oh, we, we have no intention, at least Naka has no intention to supply, provide any information in, at this little investigation gathering here. We're just listening in. Yeah, so you're just listening in, and, and you, you're kind of getting the sort of like a kind of like the the Cole's notes of this is an important book it it's gone missing from the library and um, mm. one of the scholars at the library reported seeing a person blah 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 and you're kind of getting little bits of uh, oh someone reported seeing a person yeah somebody uh, but you, you can get more information later on if you start talking to whoever um, so anyway I, you're hearing that and then um, a person who just came from his report with um, the head of the the watch unit. Mm-hmm. He comes over and says, "Apologies, the temple is uh, is uh, off limits for this evening. Is there something that I can help you with?" Uh, off limit. I I'm passing by. I have no. But well, you you seem to stop. I I thought you might have had business inside. Well, this. yeah, I actually do. A couple of our friends came down with something. We were hoping we can find some cure, but it uh, seems like they're busy today with uh, with whatever's going on here. Yes, yes, there's some some sort of unfortunate uh, circumstances that. Uh... Uh, does this officer look like uh, just a typical guard? watch or whatever uh this guy here that you're talking to is a priest of arth oh okay, okay. yeah he's like a, he's like one of the underlings and oh, i thought i thought it was a, i thought it was one of the guards who's trying to keep people away from the was vargas was that the correct person we're supposed to look for um, no his name is veltargo, veltargo. Does, does this guy match that description no no he's uh this is a young man he's probably about 20 mid 20s um very okay. very neatly kept uh his robes look brand new like almost wow. almost to the point where they're um just made a little while ago they're nice and yeah. neat, neat and creased and stuff like that they're like uh it's like a baby blue kind of um priest vestment almost like mm-hmm. that. hey this looks really nice you keep your stuff nice and uh, orderly you you don't happen to know how diseases and things like that work, do you? Because I, I, my friend is really, uh, our friends are really uh, 
suffering, and we just we just want to get through the, all of this and try to find a, a cure. Are, are, perhaps. are you um, are you panicking? I have a lot of symptoms. Yeah, are are you um, are you members of the temple? Are you? Uh... No, you know, I've I've all been thinking about it, but my faith, you know. But now my friends are at, you know, questionable. Where my, f- I'm thinking about the faith. So, why are are you enlisting? Well, always, always um, looking for new members of the uh, of the uh, congregation. Uh, was, you could never have too many people. Who are, well, you know what? I'll tell you what. I I would put my faith in in a community who can truly cure. So that's that's what I'm looking for right now. If my friends come back from from whatever sickness that we're looking to find a cure, I I'm all I'm all in. So he's uh he kind of eyes you over and um, just based on Arthur, he Arthur's got like um like a like a swollen patch where the where the sturge stuck into his arm and he's he's kind of looking a little pale um maybe a little shaky from the um the encounter with that and then the crenshaw and all that so he, he says uh is, is Do i see him look over yeah yeah he's uh oh you know i di- we didn't mean to bring him out is is this does this does this stuff uh you know does, does it spread well let, I... let me have a look if if you uh, she winks at Arthur. Yeah. He uh, he says, "Come come here. Maybe I can have a look at that. I'm not a, I'm not uh, not a, more of a more of a scholar than a than a healer. But I I can I am we were, well versed in well, some of the. We'll gladly take your advice. Um, we were sent here to find the Vatargus. Vatargus. Hmm, I know what to. Did I pronounce that right? Sorry. <laughs> Veltargo. Veltargo. Yeah, that's... Veltargo. We're, we're here to seek Veltargo. Uh, Naka looks over at Asami. Nick, Ixne, Ixne. <laughs> yeah, I thought that's what we were... I thought that was the plan. Just walk in there and ask. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God! No, no, no. Here, here. My friend, Arthur. She pulled Arthur. See this wealth? I'm trying to get his the 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 guy's attention to maybe I forget about. I completely misunderstood what we pl- thought. I thought we were going in here. Yeah, we got to start small. I don't know, but you know, it's out. Let's see if I can see this. Get this guy to forget. Yeah, he's he doesn't really know what you guys are talking about anyway. So okay, <clears throat> he says, well, Arthur, will, will you will you show will you show this uh this uh uh, uh my name is Altimaic. Ultimate. Ultimate. Show, show Ultimaic your 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 condition. He he may he. It looks like he he's he may help be able to help. Will you, uh... Yes, of course. I have recently been contracting, just like showing like showing off the spot, like just like rattling off. We don't know what it is, your... right, Arthur? No, I just recently contracted it. It's been quite the bomb. And it's, this I think we were in the sewers, right? I think you contracted something in the sewers. Mm-hmm. You don't smell as though you. you... Well, you know, we cleaned yeah, up. Of, of course not. I've been wa- I've been washing all day trying to get rid of it, but to no avail. Let's have a look here. Were you were you a rat bit, perhaps bit by a rat? He's. Kinda... I did see a rat running around, Arthur. Yeah, I was bitten by something. It's a bit dark. Maybe some of that sewer water got in your mouth. I'm no doctor. I can't exactly tell. So he's. Uh... He says it's definitely infected, but uh, as to what it is, I don't know. Um, and like I say, I'm not. I'm more of a scholar than a healer. Um, and then she uh, she continues to re- remind him of the symptoms of fill fever or whatever. Okay. Despite yeah. what he's seeing on Arthur. Yeah. Yeah. Actually. So. Um, so you throw those symptoms, and he says, "Well, um, are you uh, are you experiencing any fever?" And he's trying to touch her forehead his hands are all like this this has been a rough night for him he's been shaken down by a bunch of cops and yeah he, he's, he's a little nervous uh his hands are a little clammy uh you don't you don't feel warm you feel actually kind of cool um like well we heard we heard someone at the temple might be able to to assess this because he's he sounds like he's an expert 
He goes by the name of uh, a priestville, not priest. Uh, what's a um, what, what do you what do you folks call your ranks? Uh, I guess he's a priest. His yeah. Targo is what we is who we we heard. No, if not, we're hoping to catch catch him. I've not heard that name it. before. Uh, there's uh, there's none of the um, none of the high priests or the um, the priests here are named Phil Targo. I I don't know any. Um, are your other are there any other locations of the church in the city that we might um, check a to see if whole street full of uh, of yeah, your but, order? Uh, no, not our. This is the only location of. Oh uh, no, no, we're we're we've been told we we need to seek out within your order specifics. I see. Um, no, I don't. Uh, nobody in our order is specifically. Um, there may be. Um, one of the high priests might see to um, the emperor, but uh, he's not. Uh, oh, what was his description? He was like a little shorter than five ten. Yeah, yeah, lanky or something. Yeah, he had yeah, like rail thin, okay. funny teeth. I don't offer up the uh, maybe not funny teeth, but you'd know him with by his smile or something. You know. Yeah. Okay. So you give that description. Yeah. Okay. So when you say that, Altimaic says, well, um, I don't, this is definitely not a, any priest that would be here, but I was robbed about a month ago by a man me, meeting that description. Ah, he, uh, well. He stole my, uh, my vestments on, uh, on my way back from the, uh, the great library. I had oh. I had to return to the temple in my small clothes. Oh, that's very unfortunate. And and where did this happen? Uh, this has happened um, on Pimp Street, um, between here and the Great Library, which is on Atheist. Surely you're familiar with the Great Library. Oh yes, of course, of course. Uh, Arthur, are you feeling all right? We must get you home. She rushes over to Arthur and try to disengage from this conversation you come, come to think of it was Madden, silver it was Madden. on silver street it wasn't on pimp street i agree i'm feeling weak all of a sudden oh part pardon us we 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 have to converse continue this conversation we'll we'll come back to find out more about the cure but right now i need to we need to get our friends yes home. yes make sure um uh perhaps a, a warm tea thank you for your generous uh knowledge uh sharing knowledge let's let's go arthur <laughs> okay. All right, so we we disengage, or at least Naka tries to. Okay, yeah, yeah, no problem. He he's got enough things on his plate, right? He's not going to dog you down the street or anything like that. All right, all right, people. There, there we have it. There is no priest Velt Veltargo. Some street or no street? Uh, what do you call him? Uh, some uh, some rogue running around. Pretending to be one, we must find this. We must find this person. Um, around that street, that that he um, that this acolyte, he's mm -hmm. an acolyte, right? Yep. Uh, was was describing or where he was robbed? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was actually on Pimp Street. Come to think of it. Okay. Yeah. And uh, do we know offhand if there's like any? Um, establishment like a bar or tavern or something like that that we might want to check out uh, i don't know about check out there's there's bars and taverns all the all over the place down there okay. if you see on the uh on the map it's on um street of the thinkers kind of like right in the middle of the map i drew another big uh circle yeah the, the, on the northwest corner of um pimp street and atheist avenue uh there's a giant oblong building uh, there's three, four buildings there. That's the great library. Okay. And then all around there, there's little uh, pubs and shops and taverns and all kinds of things. Uh, scribes, sages. Right, right, right. Yeah. All right. So as far as we're concerned, this guy is at large. Uh, he's he's last thing we know is he's robbed a priest. This guy, the acolyte. Yeah, Altimaic. Uh, and the uh, best thing that the closest that we can follow up is where it was robbed where the the robbing happened yeah 
Would our new new friends uh, that uh, Green Guild or whatever would they be able to know anything about people like that? Yeah, they probably would if they ran in the same circles. But they know Valtargo as a uh, priest of Arth. Oh, right, right. So if I if they already recognize the person behind Valtargo, they would have recognized him already, right? Yeah. As far as they know, they didn't, and they thought he was a priest. Yeah. So yeah. they won't be any help if we go back to them. True enough. Yeah. So it's up to us to uh, now, basically, the best we can do is check out the place where he robs. Maybe he hangs out there. Uh, otherwise, he's at large in this huge city. Yep. Uh, anyone have any other ideas? So you're saying carouse the bars and uh, ask, to, ask the... At least in that area, yeah. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Maybe maybe it's like one of his hot spots. Maybe people recognize or know him. All right. So you spend the rest of the night and probably a um, couple bronze eagles and maybe even a silver smeradoc buying drinks and carousing and asking around. You don't get anywhere on Veltargo. And uh, we can actually, you know, perhaps have... What we uh, spend a night, don't we? What's that? But well, we do spend a night, don't we? Yeah. We know this for okay, excellent. We can we can ask Bakai Bakai to become like a a victim, pretending to drop some coins and see if you know creates any interest in anyone wanting to rob her. <laughs> <laughs> She'll probably get probably it, but it probably won't be Veltargo. You know, to play a decoy to see if yeah. uh, if someone like like Veltargo will will. We show interest in following her or whatever. The answer is going to be yes, Bye. and you, you're going to get robbed. That's the kind of city that you're in. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're going to get robbed, but you're not <laughs> the right guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We'll, we'll just, like, we'll just set it up until until we see a match. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, Makai will get a chance to, like, beat up whoever comes at her <laughs> in the dark alley. <laughs> The guy has a problem with willpower, so the more drinking we do, the less effective she's going to be. <laughs> yeah. No, it's sort of like a little setup for her to, to practice her uh, her her uh, her fighting skills. In the meantime, uh, you know, we'll we'll narrow it down to see if what no cargo will show up. Yeah, no hits on Veltargo, but uh, whatever shenanigans you cook up, um, I'm, I'm sure you. Don't need a bunch of rolls and stuff like that. Okay, but so the, that uh, that path uh, doesn't quite pan out, right? Is that what you're saying? It doesn't pan out. Um, you can spend the that's the rest of the night off the books, and yeah. um, and feel free to to drop a few coins. Uh, with drink, All right, with drinks I'm, and I'm such. Too, I'm too busy coordinating this shenanigan to uh, be drinking. <laughs> okay. You know, I think we'd earn the coins back by rolling people that are going after the car. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> we'll rob you, them you instead of them, them robbing, robbing us. You might, yeah. Yeah. Maybe give us a D10 of uh, of silver coins or, or D50 of silver coins. No. Uh, all right. So I guess I guess rest for the night and come up with a new plan to see how we can. Uh... Yeah. What does tomorrow bring? Um, Let me you know, you let's, guys, let's uh, approach Iron Tusk. Let's see what he might identif identify this description. There's an overnight rest. That should um, take off the one, point, one of the points of damage there for yeah, you, Arthur. I, yeah, I already took it off. I'll reapply. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, it automatically takes it off uh, yeah. at a long rest. Yeah. Or overnight's rest. <laughs> Uh, well, one idea is to go see if Iron Tusk can identify this description. While you're in the area of the Great Library, there's a, there's a few guardsmen out front. Okay. So, it's uh, it looks like the Great Library is kind of closed down for the moment. Although it's fairly late this at night. This is the next day? That oh, night, this is yeah, night. it's fairly late at night. So there's a couple, yeah. uh, couple city guards uh, out front. Oh, I thought we uh, were. Yeah, we're you're on to the next, next day. day. I was just uh, as an aside. You also saw some city guards at the Great Library. 
They're probably posting guards there now that... Uh, yep, exactly. It's a hot spot. Well, you know. Um, all right. So what do you, what do you guys think? Go talk to Iron Tusk or any other ideas? We could do that. I mean, the other option is to go to the green folks and say, hey, here's the history of the guy and get them looking for him too. But Iron Tusk is a good lead. Okay, maybe we can... Uh, that's a good idea. Go back and say, hey, can you send some of your people out and get some information on this guy who's not a priest? Especially the guys who didn't die. So. <laughs> the four guys who didn't die. Uh, <laughs> maybe we'll get more eyes and ears on the on the ground. Okay. So we'll do that. We'll go to Iron Tusk and we'll go to the Green Dagger. Uh, talk to Serathus and... Uh, now that we know that it's it's not actually a priest of some order, uh, it might pleasure us to uh, <laughs> it might pleasure Naka to uh, to to bring him back, uh, so Sarathus can deal with him. A, a true hunt. Yes. So um, Sarathus, uh, it's going to take those guys probably with all the. Uh, strength damage and stuff that they took. It's probably going to take them yeah. about a week or so to recover. And yeah. um, and she's hunkered in with her lieutenants, or he's hunkered in with his uh, his three lieutenants there. Um, yeah. So he's kind of they're kind of off the table for the the next week or so. But um, right. he's um, he's got a couple people out on the street, and um, they're asking around. Uh, well, they, they haven't come up with anything yet. I guess we also wanted to alert him that uh, if he's going to buy more stuff from priests, make sure. Uh... <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, so he's not got one of the wool pull over his eyes again. Yeah. Well, he he identified the like in game terms. He detected magic and identified the potions. Mm. So, um, Veltargo has some kind of magic. I'm just ah, maybe uh. Maybe some kind of disguise ability. Yeah, I don't know if anybody's uh, skilled enough in Arcana, but uh, maybe Luna. Let me see what she's shooting here. Hey, wait, have we seen Luna I'm, and Veltargo at the same time in, in, the, same the, place? in the same room yeah. together? Yeah, I'm trained in Arcana. I know some. All right. We noticed that Luna's absent when the book was stolen. Yeah. Is this a call to roll? Yes. She, give me a shot. Uh, hmm, not bad. Better. Better. Yeah, Asami um, would know. I pay that, attention when Luna speaks. Yeah, that there's um, there's a spell called Magic Aura that can um, disguise things, make them appear to mm. just be other things. Um, so we have uh, without asking what level that is. What like I think experience it, we want have to be. I think it's level one, to be honest. No kidding, really. Okay. Someone who has access to magic or is a magic user. It's a uh, magic aura. Or someone with that innate racial ability. Uh, it's a bard spell, too. Yeah, so bard, psychic, sorcerer, Oh, yeah, wizard, I know all about it. That's yeah, right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You alter yeah. an item's aura so it registers to detect spells as though it were... Some roguery magical. going on. Yes. Someone's uh, running around... Uh, Doing business. Somebody interested. So, what, with in... that twenty-six, I explain what I know about such things. It is not a spell I know, but I have heard of such. That's something that I would do if I want to do something like this. Yep. Naka says. So this uh, this compounds our search for this person. Compounds the complexity and difficulty to find this person. Well, just um, oh, it's just an aura, right? It doesn't change a physical or anything. So if we see someone with a description, it could be the same person who's using the magic. No, they they change the aura of an item. Oh, oh, oh the yeah, potion. They can make the potion magical. Yeah, yeah, they can make the potion seem to be like. But the a... person is the same person. Yeah. It has nothing to, to do with the person. There's that's also spells that disguise people as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so, um, okay. So we explain that, or maybe uh, 
Asami, Asami explained that to yeah to so Sarathus that he was duped by magic. Well, I, I, I'm not going to go far and say he was duped. I will or say however people, you want to say it. Yeah, yeah, more diplomatic. Um, some people can use this spell to mask how things exist and how they can be perceived. That's why and your people could, didn't get uh, healed. Yeah, or it, it could have been just a vial of water that was had the perception or the appearance of this. Person. Now that I think about it, it's probably the most likely. Mud water. So he uh, he gets me to hire someone to collect a key for him. For what reason, I don't know. And then the promise is, I had the key in my hand for about 15 minutes. It was incredibly powerful. Well, my friend Sarathis, some days we are actors within a part, some days we are directors within I'm not sure a what play. That, I'm not sure what that means, but... Uh, you were played, my friend. <laughs> I see, yes, yes. Speaking of plays, did you hear about the uh, the madness at the Midnight Theater? Um, Tell us what you, you heard. I heard yeah. that um, one of the... Uh, Kieran, the uh, the the lead actor in a play uh, called The Gourmand, was uh, torn apart from the inside by some sort of magical creature, and that um, a giant somehow made its it a lady giantess actually um, storm the stage and drove the creature off with the assistance of. Uh, some sort of magical creature? Can I use perform oratory to enhance his understanding of the story and talk Luna up? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Naka makes a face of that meme of a Star Trek character looking shocked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say, well, this is what I heard. And, uh, right, just that that giantess just creamed everything, just totally, totally um, saved the day. And when I say everything, I'm talking about the creatures that were of danger and, and saved, you know ensured that the citizens were safely escorted out that uh whoever that giantess is true hero talk it up <laughs> yeah and, and don't look at luna while spit you know no no <laughs> Nothing luna, luna, like that character over there <laughs> luna's just kind of drifted away the more i think about it the more i think serathis is like internet explorer the news comes really really late <laughs> he's more like netscape that's how well she tells the story <laughs> Do I, oh, that's a good story. I was, I was going to say, do I need to make a constitution constitution check to not throw up? But okay. <laughs> All right, so as, that's as much as we can uh, get the help from Green Dagger and Serathis. Uh, he's limited resources at this point. But at least he knows what's going on, and if he sees something, he can send his people to give us more information. Yes. Yeah, we'll we'll give them we'll give them uh is it who's whose address like the, across from the apothecary maybe the last chance or the last chance yeah to deliver a note there if he comes up with anything okay and I I suppose it's a, in his best interest to work with us here so we can bring this guy back to him yeah yeah if he comes up with anything for sure he'll let you know all right. Um, and then let's go talk to uh, go talk to our friend uh, Iron Tusk. What does he have to say? So Iron Tusk is working away. It looks like he's um, he's mending some nets. Um, we drop uh, the description. See if any light bulbs go up. No, never, never heard of. Uh, was uh, was Cyrathus mad? Well. Right. I mean, wasn't would happy. You, would, 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 would you, how would you feel if you were in his shoes? Yeah, understandable. Uh, uh, no, I've, I've never heard of uh, anybody like, well, of course you see people, you don't, I don't know anybody like this. Um, well, uh, again, as we told Serathis, if, uh, if your folks happen to see anything, you can deliver a note to us at, uh, what is that place again where we hang out? Last Chance. Last chance. Why can't I remember? Last chance. Uh, oh, oh. We can make it worthwhile. Your while. The gaming hall in the Tenderloin. I, uh, yeah. 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 I know Fatty. All right. Sounds good. Uh, thought we, uh, that, we worked uh, together. 
Is that pig Narc still coming there? Who's he referring to? Uh, the first night we guys that were there, there was two creepy guys, and uh, one of them, his name was Narc, K N A R Q. Were they? Were they're they, they're uh, fairly regulars, yeah. So Iron Tusk says, "Is that pig Narc still go in there?" As far as I can remember, yes. Yeah. Is that a good thing or not? I owe him a beating. <laughs> but that's uh, that's old business. He looks kind of pissed off now, like a quick temper, pissed off. I'm sure that that would be a good show if it were on the the stage at the theater. We did just spend the night back there, right? Yeah, you probably went back after everything, we and went, yeah, was yeah, he there. Yep, there was he was yeah. there. Yeah, he was there last night. I haven't thought about that bastard in quite some time. Well, you know, lots of mice show up in the same place that they're. Yes, the rats always go back to the same hole. Yep. Yeah. Is that the expression? I always get mixed up the mice and the rats. I'm not sure. I'm not good with the expressions. Idioms it's fail me. Yeah. All right, Tusk. We'll catch you next time. We'll catch you on the flip side. Be well. All right, so two more relatively dead end. Uh... Any other ideas? I could stand in the corner where we last heard um, of the robbery and sort of... We did that! Well, did, let I'm... me finish. Oh, okay. I'll be perform oratory to, like, two of you that are on the street. Sort of like a street performance, but the oratory will be telling the story of Vartagus, and I can intentionally mispronounce his name and make it the most insulting <laughs> story ever. And uh -huh. maybe uh, th that attention will grab, and he might be like, might, might pull him out of or at least someone who knows him i don't know it could work it could work both ways it could true, work true. the way that you intend it or it could work in the way that he's he now going further him. further yeah. into into hiding that someone has uh, eyes on him yes yeah, for ideas there's an idea uh, i'm trying to it. remember that when we got the book and the correspondence yes um wasn't there a history there was another guy obviously the two guys were insulting each other and did one of the, was one of those guys involved in the theft of the book and not the other so maybe the other guy is uh path or no? if you go back over the notes which you still have um mm -hmm. i'll just read out um the correspondence between popoff and veltargo there was there was some other notes about um another thing the dreamer who speaks and they were kind of going back and forth with each other a little bit. But it does, he doesn't seem to have any relationship with uh, Veltargo in, in that set of notes. But in the or, uh, or the book, I'm trying to figure out who, who would have motive to get the book. Yeah, definitely Veltargo. Um, so here's the notes to pop off. Uh, we were directed to you via the Sorcerer's Guild. I was pleasantly surprised to learn that we were former neighbors before our temple relocated to the Street of the Gods near the Barsh Gate, as befitting a proper tribute to the Great One who sleeps. The temple is but an outpost to sing the praises of the Great Sleeper. Our most prominent temple, the place where we are closest to the Great Somnambulant One, is in the Great Salt Marsh, some 12 miles along the Kazi Road. Uh, we have the materials for numerous guardians, and I have sent you payment, as the guild agreed. Please advise via this courier when you should be able to come to our vault of the old one, and then. Oh, yeah. So the answer is right there. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> Popoff replies to Veltargo, "Good sir, I can do that work which you require. The materials that you have sent are usable, and the payment is generous." What my dearest brethren at the guild failed to understand was this trip through the Great Salt Marsh to your location. If you think I'm tromping through the muck and the mire, you are mad. Perhaps we could do the work at a location within the city. You mentioned a location near my home or even on the Street of the Gods. I understand that this might create some difficulties, but if this is the work you want done, and I was directed as your best option to do this work, then these are my terms. And then back to Popoff. In two weeks, uh, we have made arrangements to exit the marsh gate uninspected, and the cart should see us most of the way. Your terms are acceptable, sir, although you will fail to see the marvel of the vault of the ever-resting one. I trust you have no doubt heard the whispers from the idol of the mind speaker, the great sleeper's voice in the void. 
Uh, the temple on the Street of the Gods is meager, but will suffice for our collaboration. One day, all will revere the speaker in dreams. And then back to Tel- Veltargo. I will r- arrive at the appointed time and conduct myself as contracted. The idol interests me more than your sleeper. Uh, but we can discuss this and the control of the creations on the appointed day. I appreciate your flexibility with regards to my not wishing to travel the marsh. To pop off. This is uh, a little while after. Uh, there's a there's a bit of a, a date lull. Uh, the creations are controlled and all is progressing according to plan. I hope that your inspection of the tome continues in a f- timely fashion. Gather what notes you can. I understand that time is extremely limited, but it is imperative that we find a way to prod he who slumbers eternally. Our blessings will be multifold. You will have the satisfaction of knowing that you, and only you, were able to plumb the depths of the fathomless slumber, and the dreams that follow shall be all of our reward. And then back to Veltago. This is the final bit of correspondence. And it was probably about um, two weeks before the campaign began. So we've got to Veltago. The work continues, but I see little regarding what you described. I cannot help but... Be distracted by the sensation of power I felt while making my way to your temple. The Gallowfields Courthouse is where I would focus my attention, and not on this tome. This tome, sir, should have remained closed to all eyes for eternity. I have glimpsed the madness within, and I should close it for good upon returning it to my patron. No reward could cause me to inspect it further. It should go back to the library from where it was taken and linger in anonymity as intended. The power is too great to wield. For your purposes, I suggest investigating the courthouse beyond the gallow fields on Swan Row. The spirit world and the dream void intersect in a confluence of power. I will research this further for you should you desire me to do so. This, sir, would be a more worthy use of your time. And that's when the correspondence with Veltargo comes to a close. It sound like it sounds like there's two paths there we could go. One also, is straight out to the march. Yeah, also out of character. It took me an uncomfortably long amount of time to realize what book of Ivon you were talking about. <laughs> I realized, oh, you mean that version? That book that of Ivon. That book. That book of yeah, Ivon. So I've been playing some Call of Cthulhu recently. I was like, oh, that one. Yeah, that's the uh, the Clark Ashton Smith. Yeah, the Liber Ivoris. Is yeah, it's also called Libera Ivoris. Liber Ivoris, yes. So, so Popoff had it, and he had it open for about two and a half weeks. And Danau procured it for him at his request. And you guys were responsible for returning it to Danau, who then returned it to the library, as far as you know. Really hope Where it was stolen from. Us. What's that? I really hope they'll target us and cast Fist of Yoxathoth on us. <laughs> the, um, the connection yeah. with um, Fritz Lieber and um, Lovecraft, uh, they had a little correspondence going just before um, Lovecraft's death. So there's a little, uh, if if you notice in the um, the map of uh, Nawan, there's uh, there's special there's uh, there's a few references to the great old ones. Uh, there's a mountain range called the uh, the bones of the old ones. So there's some mythos stuff that's creeping into the game. Always fun. So we have like two paths, right? One is traipsing into the marsh, and the other one, I'm trying to remember, uh, do we know where both, one of the guys is dead, right? And the other guy is, we have yeah. no idea where he is? Yeah, the pop-off is dead. Popoff is the guy that um, Lord Denal wants to have, um, like a a spectacle of him leaving the city to get him. So, Popoff is dead. Denal, we 
returned the book to, and he returned it to the library, right? Yep, as far as you know. Okay. So then the, the toothy guy is probably a new player that came into this that took the book, unless we have... Um, it might be Beltargo himself. But uh, all right, so when you did the narrative, who was the one who said, you're, you're crazy, don't do this? Uh, Popoff. Popoff says that. Popoff says, says oh. yeah, don't. Uh, he says, I've, I've looked into this book, and this book is madness. All right, so is the other guy in the city? Can we find where he is? Oh, that's what we're trying to do, Veltargo. Yeah, Veltargo's the other guy. Veltargo the... happens to be the priest that sold the... And where did I get the, the, the D name from? Denal, Lord Denal. That's, um... Denal is yeah. our benefactor. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. I, the names are never right, reported. So, um, so basically, Veltargo got the key. He may be the th thief himself of the book recently, or someone did it for him. The last thing that was said was, I suggest investigating the courthouse be beyond Gallo Fields on Swan Road. That's what he's, Popoff says to Veltargo before he expired. Yeah. Before Popoff expired. So, you could, could also try to find out more about um, the actual theft itself. Right. Okay. The correspondent um, mentioned a place in town, too. Yeah, right? yeah. There's like, um, apparently there's a temple on um, yeah, the street of the gods cool. near the Marsh Gate. Um, oh, so Zed has uh, with his um, trophy that he's kind of kept under wraps, um, and also there, um, he's gone out with um, a couple drawings of it. Um, and kind of showed it around a couple of these uh, newer upstart temples, and uh, a couple a couple of the people got kind of um, excited to the point where it spooked Zed, and he shut things down and went home. But that's uh, the glittering statue that I yeah had. yeah you got you got the vibe that they knew sort of what you're talking about, um, but wanted to know how you knew. And they were asking you, do you do you hear the whispers in the darkness? And do you do you do you do you hear the the speaker in dreams? Do you hear the do you hear the voice from the void? Speak and I would always say yes. Yeah, and then yes, I do. The the more you played up that you did, the more they were kind of came come come into the temple and tell us, and you got re really spooked like that. And it, this this temples. Um, they're little more than just like storefronts. Uh, down near the Marsh Gate, it's just kind of like um, sometimes even like a, a lean-to skin over top of uh, you know just some cordwood and stuff like that. Uh, they're really makeshift down near the the Marsh Gate, and as you get further uh, closer to the the River Hlal, the the temples become more formal and actually pretty opulent. But the stuff near the Marsh Gate, where you were kind of doing your little investigation, you got the the vibe that there's um, there's kind of like a scene that's burgeoning on um, like a, like a growth of madness that's going on down here, and it's a lot of it's based on um, the the whispers in the darkness you heard a lot of that and the speakers and dreams and it's a lot of it's based on this drug use this trance too so you got kind of um you got kind of spooked that um you were gonna get taken advantage of or perhaps assaulted or um get to a point where you were backed into a corner so you kind of shut it down you got you got the real vibe that there's some real madmen down there that are that are preaching these these religions, and there was four or five of them. Um, a couple that you remember specifically. One was um, one was called the Great Sleeper. Um, you're not really sure the name. It might have been Shathakwa or Sathikwa or Thakwa, something like that. Um, and there was another one. Um, it looked like s some sort of schism between the spider god and some sort of offshoot. Um, they were calling it Moglathar. Um, 
some sort of derivative of the spider god. The spider god is pretty well known in um, in Lankamar, and it's got a big temple way up the street. But there's like another offshoot of their religion um, that's sort of taking hold. And um, you got a vibe that there was some serious crazies going on there, and uh, a lot of it stemmed on stemmed with this drug use. I would have shared that with the party as, yeah. as it occurred. So. Yeah, I think that was maybe the last time when you had your business that uh, that was going to, that's when you told me that that's what you wanted to do when you had a business meeting that the last time. All right, since we're near Marshgate, um, where the robbery happened, uh, we should just head over to the Marshgate. Or do we want to investigate about the theft first? Which robbery? There's been a couple now. The robbery of the Acolyte. Okay, so the Acolyte, um, and you could actually maybe go back to the, to the Temple of Arth, too. It might, be, might have quieted down a little bit since then. He might be able yeah. to tell you more. Okay. It's up to you. Um, All right, so... But, but that robbery took place, um, yeah, around Pimp Street. So that was further up in the more wealthier section. Right. What was the name of that Acol- Ac- Acolyte? Altimaic the Calm. I'll print I'll type Altimaic it up. I'll type it up. The Calm. All right. We can return to Altimaic to get more detail on that robbery of his that he was a victim. Yes. We can A, we can do that. B, we can go and uh uh sweeten up the guards and talk to them and learn more. Yeah. Get detail out of them. That's B and C, go straight to the temple near the gate marsh and investigate to see if Vel- Velcargo is there. I suggest doing A and B first before we... Uh, yeah, they're closer to home. Let's do that. Before we uh, confront Veltargo if we see him. Okay. Uh, which one first? Altimaic or to the uh, guards at the library or the library? Uh, or? Probably simpler first, Altimaic. Okay. We already established some kind of a talking to the guards might be a little bit more difficult. Okay. So Altimaic, um the Temple of Arth is back to business as usual. Um, whatever investigation they were doing about uh, um, the the priests of Arth, um, they seem to have been exonerated from any involvement in whatever has gone on. So you get there. Um, there's a couple couple city guards around and they're kind of looking for whatever they're looking for but the, there's regular traffic in and out of the temple uh supplicants are going in making their donations their offers they want to talk to priests about this and that um so there's um you can go right into the actual temple now and the actual temple is quite spectacular this is the outside of it and I had a let's see here. I thought I had a picture of the inside. Oh, maybe I didn't bring it over, but I'll, I'll bring it over for next time. The, the inside is just like um, once you walked all the way down the long. Um, the long tunnel-like hallway down the middle. The actual main um, vestibule is truly spectacular, and you can see like priests coming and going and stuff like that. It's like a big oculus, uh, big domed oculus in the middle, um, not unlike like the Capitol building. So All right, pretty spectacular. Uh, we we asked for him. If he's not present. Okay, yeah, yeah. So uh, somebody goes to fetch Altimaic, and he comes out. and says, oh, hello. I, uh, I see your friend's feeling better. Did that tea help? Yes, that tea helps a lot. And actually, uh, I want to be honest with you. The reason we asked you last time about this Valtargo person was one of us was robbed by similar means as you were, and we wanted to confirm that that was a, the same person. So we're hoping you can give, shed some more light on the way you were robbed to compare 
to how we, my friend here, was robbed. Yeah, I was I was coming back from the um, the great library. It was, it was after dark um, along Pimp Street, and um, just out of the blue, a, a man just grabbed me by the shoulder and dragged me down. And was that night? It was at night, yes. Dragged me down into into one of the alleyways and just started stripping my robes off. I was. Did he seem strong? He was. He was more powerful than I. I mean, you, you look at him. This guy looks like a wet noodle. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> Anyone could probably overcome him. Yeah, exactly. So okay, okay. you get. He says, "I, I, I feared for my virtue." <laughs> I can understand. But uh, oh, yeah. he he only he only took my robes and he ran off. But I I I tried to find him as best I could, and um, I, I I did. Very brave of you to try to come back and and uh, and and face your assault assaulter. I did. I your, did manage to uh, to grab with some your virtue intact. Some sort of necklace off of him. Some sort of. Did uh, you? May, may of, I see it? Do you still have it? I believe I do. Just uh, back in my chamber. Just give me a few moments. So he goes off and any other questions for this guy? He's he's a stooge. So th- anybody, any, any other questions before he comes back? Yeah, you've got a few minutes. No, let's get the necklace. Okay. So Altamaic says, yeah, it's uh, yeah. In, in when, when everything finished, I, ha- I, ha- I had this in my hand and he, he shows All you right. a, shows May you I? A, Yes, absolutely. He holds it out and he shows you a stone pendant that looks like this. Uh huh. So it looks like so, um, on on the one side it's kind of flat and it it's um, like carven, and then on the other side it looks like it might have some similarities to that um, golden statuette. It's wet noodles. Yeah, yeah. The um, there are noodles. Yeah, sim- similar motif, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, if you don't mind, on your behalf, we, we'd like to hold on to this as evidence. So mm-hmm. if we find more ev- uh, evidence of this person, we'll, we'll report the whole thing to the, to the guards. Are, are, uh, do you mind if we hold on to this? Are you some sort of investigators? No, we are doing this uh, for our own virtues and, and, you, he, and morals. What, what did he steal from you? Um. Yeah, uh, I, I, I would, ra- I would rather not say it. And you, and you think that this person is uh, somehow related to the questions that I faced last night from the guards? Perhaps. What, what were, what were asked? Well, the guards um, wanted to know if I was at the Great Library yesterday, and I or, or were you? Or a couple days ago? No, no, I wasn't. I was here. Um, I actually, I've been reluctant to go back. Um, Why is that? Well, the last time I was there, I was robbed of my vestments. Right, right, of course. I've uh, been leery about um, straying far from the grounds. I um, Oh, you poor thing, I feel similar. Are you aware of others that have faced this uh, similar situation as you have? No, no, not that I'm aware of. Not that anyone's come forward with anyway. Um, so... But they wanted to know if um, if I'd been at the the library, if I was familiar with um, some tome. He just it was described as being rather large and um, um, having. It matches our description, our 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 knowledge of that tome. Yeah, yeah. He he. The way he says that it was described, uh, this this tome. He didn't have a title. They didn't have a title for it, but they. Uh-huh. Um, they uh, they said it was rather large, about uh, a couple feet across, and quite quite weighty, and um, had a lock that couldn't be um, couldn't be opened, some sort of um, arcane coverings. Um, Did they mention whether they identify or got any clue of the, who the theft might be? Any sighting? No, the, the who the thief might be. The uh, the librarians are seem to think that it was a um, a priest of Arth. I can't. I couldn't imagine one of one of my brethren uh, wanting to. Well, we have we have access to the library. Um, we could just borrow the book. Why? Why would well, we? Well, you did mention this. Uh, this person who accosted you did take your robe, and perhaps he is the one who penetrated and got well, the book himself. Why didn't I think of that? I oh, should. that's good. To, that's good to know. I that should, they've I should, uh, identified. I should, 
I should be off person. to tell the guards right away. Well, you could if you wish. Um, but, you know, just to be sure, I'll, I'll circle back to you to give you actual information what, what we discover, if you don't mind. Ah, I see you want to uh, you want to bring. I want to confirm everything. Make sure it's factual stuff that we will bring to yeah. the guards. Yeah, I don't like reliving those. Uh, yeah. And those guards made me awful nervous. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if if you don't mind, I I can act upon your behalf. Oh, I would I would appreciate that a great deal. Can you remember anything else? Um, that the guards asked of all your the guards. The guards seem to believe that. Um, Somehow, um, they escaped. I, the, he, they didn't really get into all the details with this, but um, I was talking to um, one of the other, um, one of the one of my other friends who's a scribe, and um, they were asking about um, magic, some sort of something, something that the scribe who witnessed the thieves escape um is involves it, magic is, isn't adding up um mm. I'm, I'm not a hundred i don't know exactly may, may we speak to the scribe and and hear his recounting of what what he might have heard yeah absolutely i can i can go get him um if you don't mind sure i will just be one moment and all right you casters keep your ears open pick up any clues <laughs> Okay, he comes back. And then, While he's gone, I wanted to cast the tech magic and then look at the same and see if it glows. Okay, oh, you're gonna mess up your mind big time. Okay, yeah, we'll find out. It it does not glow. Sand check. It does not glow. Okay, I'll dismiss it. Then. It has um. It, it looks like like it's so flat along the back. It, it almost looks like a casting of some sort. It's not, but it is of rock. So it's kind of strange. Like it might have been formed with magic at some point, but it's no longer magical. Mm. It's almost like if someone poured a uh, plaster of Paris into a cast, but okay. it but it was actual stone. Like this, mm. this little or something very hot melted the yeah the, the stone into the cast. Yeah, exactly. Or the rock into the cast. But there doesn't seem to be any, like, scoring or scorching or anything like that. Right. All right, you casters, you can ask the scribe and see if you can glean any information regarding how the escape happened. Magically. So, um... Uh, I listened to the conversation between Naka and this individual. I want to get a feel for... Uh, I, I, I feel he's probably being truthful and honest, but very, very skilled con men could pull that off. So, what do I get sense motive-wise? Yeah, for sure. Um, this is on the on, ac acolyte or the on uh, Ultimaic? Correct. Okay, yeah. If if this guy's a con man, then you would he, recognize he's it. extremely convincing. But, but, well, I mean, I know it's not likely, but if he was in cahoots with the guy and then told this whopper, yeah, um, there's a um, connection and a bigger conspiracy than just one guy. So that's why he seems that. pretty forthcoming with you, you know. Here's I found this and I get this that and. So he, if if he was trying to hide anything about a uh, connection with Veltargo, uh, he doesn't seem to be holding it back. All right, so the scribe arrives on the scene. Okay, with us. the scribe's name is Chermon, C H E R M O N, and he says, uh, "Oh, Alt Altimaic tells me that uh, you're some sort of investigator. Uh, you you are you worth with the city watch?" Uh, Ultimaic is uh, is being very uh, uh, generous in describing us. That we're we're concerned citizens. I see. I see. Um, and uh, we have we have similar situation uh, of personal robbery, and we wanted to confirm and gather the facts and compare the facts to see if it's the same. I see. Okay. Perpetrator. perpetrator. Well, uh, uh, when the first guard questioned me. He had, you know, had I been to the library in the last, and I have, uh, I wasn't there on the day in question or anything like that. And then um, um, when Watch Commander Jagard Stanton, he questioned me further and asked me if I knew anything about um, um, 
a way that a man could um, seemingly dive through a third story window without breaking the glass. And I said, no, I've never heard of such thing. And then he said, um, if, if you could dive through a window, a closed window, without breaking any glass, and then by the time a witness perhaps maybe move 10 or so feet to look out that window to see what's become of you and already be on the ground on your feet and running. How would you have heard of anything like that? And I said, of course, I've never heard of anything like that. That sounds completely preposterous. But uh, it sounded like there was some sort of um, sorcery at hand that uh, I'm not familiar with. How versed are you, um, <clears throat> Sherman, with, uh, I, I, have, have you heard of vampires? There's the, uh, the folk tales, of course, yes, but nothing, um, <laughs> these sort of things. It, Entertain it, me here. Should, should this thief be a vampire, would it be possible to jump at the window, became missed? go through the window and return to its normal form. Well, if it, would, it was mist, how would the mist get through the glass? It still would be mm, That's be a good mist. question. It sounds like a dimension door spell or something of that nature. Uh, a witch? I'm not, that, fam not familiar with. That's a high-level spell, though, so that's not something somebody could normally do. Um, between all of us right here? GM. Yes, you've watched Luna do something very similar. What, what, what did Luna do? When you guys were in the, um, in the, in the theater, uh, instead of... Luna was moving around through, in, in, through space. It's like a dimension hop or something. It's, it's, yeah, it's it, like instead of going down. down through the small stage door and shrinking herself down, she just kind of popped down to the floor below. Yeah. Okay, so that's a lower, obviously. That sounds lower like level. conjuration to me. Well, uh, trans, right. Is Luna a transmutation specialist? Uh, so, Sherman, uh, so let's say back to reality, no vampires. Could this be done via some type of teleportation? You may wish to consult with some sort of uh, the Sorcerer's Guild, perhaps. I'm not, uh, I know, I know a few, um, a few of our, um, High priest claim to have uh, have, power, right. have powers over the greater mysteries of of of, of, of the cosmos, but uh, I assure you, um, fair answer. But your your observation or your description is very valuable. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, and uh, good luck in your search. I uh, and may Arth guide your way, and may Arth provide answers to your. Your questions. Um, every secret has a source. And she nods uh, and allow them to go back. And, and of course, do donations are always welcome. The um, the front door is. Uh, is oh, a, this a, has a been so. I've been so raptured with this. Uh, I I will definitely uh, make my contribution on the way uh, out. Uh, perhaps, Brother Altimaic, you could walk your uh, your guests down to the door and maybe uh, enlighten them as to um, maybe our next um, our next uh, service. And then <laughs> Altimaic's like, yeah. All right, Altimaic, uh, she's gonna whisper to him, "What's what's the what's the acceptable amount?" Oh no, no. If if if, if you're going to bring this rapscallion to justice. Consider that. No, no, no! I insist. I insist. I, I, I don't. Oh, but if, if, if you feel, if you feel, if you feel there's no need, then, then you know, I respect that. No, it's uh, the the fact that uh, that you're you're seeking justice and uh, a solution to this problem is. Uh, but for my information, what would be a good what would be a good amount? Have a, a bronze eagle, silver smerduck, maybe a couple of iron ticks, something, nothing, nothing absurd. I see. Well, thank you, Ultimate. I, I will, I will circle back and let you know the result of all my findings and. 
Well, I hope uh, to see you again, and I hope to see you at one of our services. Of course. When's the next one? Uh, we have one nightly. We have ah. one. A vigil at, at, uh, begins at dusk. Very flexible, then. We see the uh, we sing the praises of the all-seeing one every evening at dusk. We, we bid you fair, good night, then. Uh, have yourself a good day. And thank you all for right. all you do. We try. We try our best to bring justice. All right, and we'll wrap it up right there. Good game, guys. We will have a fight in one of these games, I swear. Uh, I think Charisma 13 is decent, right? Above average for me to, to like, for Naka to have done all that, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. She's not, you know, she's not focused on certain social skills, but 13 is, is oh yeah, it's like three points above average. It's better than, better than mine. <laughs> All right. Um, cool. Awesome. All right. Good job, guys. So we have a couple more leads to follow next time. A couple more leads. You guys can uh, hash things out on the, on the board. Uh, whatever you want to do. Um, I look forward to your uh, your investigations. You're getting close. Cool. Um, yeah, I think I think the the temple at at Marshgate is probably a good spot, but I don't I don't know if we want to confront him yet. Yeah, yeah. There well, might... we we should probably talk to the guards. I mean, that was yeah. suggested. Yeah, just bring and, uh, bring bring force if needed, right? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, like, at, least, at least let them know that where where the, the the stolen book is if they need to follow it. I mean, we have the necklace, so that's that's a clue. We could ask a few questions there, but I have a feeling it's going to follow the same path as the statue. Um, the GM sort of alluded there might be some clues there by talking right. to the guards. So right. see what other knowledge they have. And then finally, when we have these things put together, then go out to the marsh. Right, right. That's what I mean, is uh, we, we don't want to confront that situation yet. All right, everybody. Thanks for uh, hanging out and uh, had a good time. Yes. We'll see you in a couple we weeks. know the distance oh, going through the marsh, like how long of a trip that would be and like the potential things we would... Yeah, if, uh, if, if you're going by, um, by Popoff's letters, um, 12 <laughs> miles along the Kazi Road, it's probably about a four or five hour walk into the marsh um people generally who stay along the kazi road don't have too many difficulties it's when you get off to the marsh either to the north or the south um things can get pretty hairy pretty fast um you're probably not looking at an extended stay in the marsh but depending on what you find 12 miles out on the kazi road you don't really know right well, that's what I'm trying to get at is if it's so we are aware of such things like wolves hang out there. I don't know. I'm just yeah. There's um, not known. Like, uh, Knock specifically knows. Knock specifically knows a lot about the uh, the more dangerous fauna. Yeah, we can uh, we can get into that either on Discord. Um, so, like I said, like the GM said, Naka hangs out there to hunt or whatever. Yeah. we can gather when um, when we information from Naka. When I had like rough backgrounds from people and stuff like that, I, I gave certain people certain bits of information, um, and Naka, I gave her like a, a whole list of um, dangerous creatures from the marsh. Cool. If, if that's what you're looking for, it was just to be prepared for where we're going into. Yeah, you so. can uh, you can share that GM as if Naka was were to share with them. Yeah, uh, abs- absolutely. Within the, the two weeks until next session. Sounds good. And then we can try to find ways to learn about if we ever run in, if we run into them. Sounds good. All right, guys. All right, everybody. Have a great uh, night, whatever's left of it. And uh, see you next time. Yeah, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Good game, guys. Bye. 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 Take care. Yeah. Mm.